Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy, the show that talks 100% L.A. Galaxy soccer. We're glad you could join us. Now it's time to sit back and relax as your hosts navigate through the twisting, turning, but never boring world of the five-time MLS Cup champion, L.A. Galaxy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. We are out of the preseason, boys and girls. February 23rd, coming to you. Just a couple days away from the LA Galaxy start of the 2023 season. I'm your host, Josh Guestman. We have a bunch to get to, and I'll be honest with you. It's not like I put any of this stuff in order. It's kind of just like a smorgasbord of news, entertainment, questions, discussion, all that fun stuff, getting you ready for El Trafico. On Saturday, winter storm warnings, snow in the Southland, all those fun things coming and heading your way right now. To help me do all that, he's back. We're glad to have him. It's Eric, the Portuguese Hammer Vieira. Eric, is it snowing in Texas? It is not snowing. Actually, oh. beautiful weather. Oh. Uh, the irony of all ironies. My parents are visiting from yes. Southern California. Mm-hmm. Weather's beautiful in Texas, and they're going to fly back into a winter storm yes. this weekend. So, yeah. you know, I don't know what's going on there, but, you know, get get your weather together over there. It's, says the guy whose weather fluctuates 80 degrees from top to bottom. If it, Yeah, I'm, I'm, most of the time I'm like, hey, uh, if the weather could just stay between 68 and 72, that would be great, <laughs> right? You know, that's sort, yeah. of where, sort of where it goes. Um, I, I Apparently I set the time wrong on, on YouTube. Maybe I put it at 8.30 instead of 8 um, oh, for, the, for the see, thing. You're Did so you, punctual. I thought people were saying you're, you know, a few seconds well, late. I know. That's what I thought, yeah. too. And they're like, 830? <laughs> what about I probably you have to click the button and then you have to scroll down. And I may have scrolled down one. Too. I was I was in a hurry. Um, you're, so, you're excited. We've got a lot of news packed show. <laughs> There's so much stuff. Like, <laughs> I want to tell you that I have about 30 or 40 graphics ready for us tonight. I have like all of this paper sitting yeah, here, which, my, which some of it doesn't cover the graphics. Like there's stuff in here that I don't have graphics for. Um, yeah, wh- my notes app shut down a bunch of times with all the screen grabs I was trying to shove in there. So yeah, my, my notes app is not very happy with you right now. Yeah, it is. It's uh, it, it, there's a lot of stuff. I mean, this is it, Eric. We are out of the preseason. No more preseason. Preseason is done. This is this is game week one. We are in game week one. We were in game week one on on Monday. We are still in game week one on Thursday. A huge game coming up at the Rose Bowl. Winter weather involved. Somebody said it might be like <laughs> thirty nine and raining at kickoff. Like that doesn't that doesn't sound like that's gonna I was be. Gonna say, yeah, hashtag snow traffico just <laughs> doesn't have the same ring to it. Can yeah. we get some snow flurries? That would be the only thing that would make it like the best is, is and, snow flurries in Pasadena. Yeah, an ice storm for two Southern California based clubs paying each other. That just that feels like MLS. The MLS <laughs> my, my my mother and my father who braised me on. Yeah, it is uh it, it it's kind of interesting to sit there and say, Hey, let's have one of the biggest games in major league soccer history, but let's do it at one of the times in Southern California where absolutely you could get crazy weather. Like it's always remember the start of the season. It's always sort of hit or miss whether or not it's going to like rain on opening day yeah. or, you know, all that stuff. MLS cups held in December, get rained on, you know, it's yeah. like December through really in February, the- maybe a little into March. You, you know, you could get, you could get weather. And, and they said, Hey, I have a great idea. Let's not play it at the place that has a roof. Let's play it in a place that doesn't have a roof. <laughs> and the South, it's Southern California. It doesn't rain in Southern California. Do you think yeah. they even stopped for a second to think about the weather? I, I don't think so. No. I don't think it was ever a thought that, it, and if it was going to rain, they didn't think it was going to be possible snow flurries and freezing temperatures. Definitely not that, dude. If you are, 
if you're going to this game, and I know some people are, some people aren't. So some people are going to watch it on TV. Some people are going to go to the... If you are going to this game, you are ha- going to have to do something that Southern Californians rarely have to do. You're going to have to layer, right? Yeah. I mean, that you're going to you're gonna have to have your base layer on, then maybe a long sleeve shirt, right? And then after long sleeve shirt, probably a sweatshirt. And then, as somebody said, you could go to Walmart or Target and you could buy one of those ponchos for a dollar, right? That's, and, that is the best dollar you're going to spend is with that poncho because in a wet sweater or if you have a rainproof jacket you're fine but like a wet sweater or you know without the right shoes if you have cloth shoes definitely don't take those but here's my pro tip for cold weather hand warmers hand warmers go to sporting goods store or you know one of those places they sell them for like marathon runners and stuff or when you go or in the camping section hand warmers you know i think you break them apart and they start to heat up put those in your pockets in in a in a hoodie Right. Uh, and, and closure and, and you're good to go. You're feeling really nice and toasty. It almost gets too hot with those, but I'd rather have that than the opposite. I will say that um, it, it seems like there is a better and better chance that as the day goes on on Saturday, that the rain will stop. So if you're headed there, I heard that they're tarping the field at uh, at the Rose Bowl in order to keep the rain off of it. So that way it'll yeah. be drier because otherwise I think you could really expect it sloppy. But at some point they're going to have to take the tarp off for the guys to get out there. And it may be raining enough during warm ups and everything else that it's still going to be, you know, a, yeah. a, a sloppy field. But yeah, the spectacle of it could be really cool. I think that the weather and the cold is going to scare a whole bunch of people off um, from going to the game. And I also think that the boycott is going to scare a whole bunch of people off from yeah. going to the game. So I'm really interested to see what the turnout is. Uh, I think I've told everybody I'm going to be out of the out of the state. I'm going to be in Colorado. So I'll be watching on Apple TV. Uh, MLS season me passed. too. I'll yeah. also be out of state. What Surprise. <laughs> Um, this is like one of the first, I think, openers I've missed in probably 15 years, something like that. Um, so I'll, I'll be there, but I'll be watching it. Um, and we'll, we'll sort of keep an eye on everything and I'll, I'll give you my best sort of uh, impressions from afar. Uh, and also really like the first official Apple TV viewing yeah. se- segment in this particular time as well. Should be able to tune into Joe Titino because of the home. So there's a lot of th- interesting things going on. Let's get to a little bit of uh, what's going on here at the show. Just a reminder, we have our t-shirts out there. We have the Bishop, we have the thousand shows and we'll have the dp rule up on there corner of the galaxy.com forward slash shop uh those things are starting to wind down they usually have about three weeks we probably still have until i think the like the first or second week in march to really get all of these um going and then you'll get your shirts printed and they'll be out delivered to you but i would just suggest that if you're interested in any of these that you go um and you give them a chance uh and of course we always appreciate your support whenever you do it so please 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 uh any support you can give the channel we would appreciate it uh some other things are in the works obviously as we sort of uh, head towards the rest of the season but i wanted to touch on that just for a second yeah i don't think i've been on talking about the shirts but yeah i know we were workshopping some ideas and you were showing some possible plans for the day on shirt or not day on shirt, or if you just like Jess, uh, that that's going to be a shirt that you buy. So again, I think that's a solid one, especially with, uh, you know, some injury news coming with the LA galaxy, uh, as of today. Uh, and then the DP shirt, the designated player having the rules there, such a ridiculous shirt. Yeah. <laughs> th- this is it's one that's been in the works. We've always talked about having your cam shirt, your gam shirt, your DP shirt. So this is the opening opener in a series of shirts. I, I can bet that there's going to be more coming down the pipe. Yeah, exactly. Um, I was asked, Christian in the chat room says, well, Josh, will you give us a week one review of MLS on Apple TV? Have you, I mean, I'm sure some of you, I'm sure some of you have. Um, some of you have clearly seen the LA Galaxy preview that came out with uh, Jillian Sakovitis. Uh, did I say that right? Sakovitz. Sakovitz. I think it's Sakovitz. Yep. Mm-hmm. She's going to be mad at me. I was, I was, and I was, I was really trying to get it. Sakovitz. <laughs> say Jill. 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 Yeah. Jill. Jillian yeah. Um, and Taylor Twelman. And most of the time, I know Galaxy fans are like, Taylor Twelman. And then they throw <laughs> something um, or they light a Taylor Twelman, like, you know, rookie card on fire or something like that. Uh, you, sh- you need to listen. And I don't know if everybody has told you to listen yet, but if they told you to watch this, you need to watch it. Um, Taylor Twelman's thrown, I, I don't know, maybe the divorce from ESPN has given him a little. <laughs> like juice in his step. The, the, he's he's just he talks a lot of things that we've been talking about. Yeah. Um, he calls this the most important season for the L.A. Galaxy in their history because they have their neighbors across the street that just won a title. They have not had r- recent success, although last year wasn't horrible. And everybody yeah. agrees that, you know, they were steps in the right direction. But basically, Twelman says, I'm with the fans and then and talks about the boycott and says, I'm with the fans on this. He goes, you know, there's been this decline. There's been this downward sort of spiral for the LA Galaxy. And yes, there's a momentary blip, but we've seen momentary blips. Zlatan, right? And he calls yeah. Zlatan a Band-Aid. Yeah. Um, you know, he'll do it. <laughs> again, go watch it. You need to watch it. It's I think it's important for you. And I think it'll also give you an idea of perhaps 
the quality of these things that you're going to get. Cause I thought the quality was outstanding, like really well, good. Yeah. That, that's how I ended up finding it is I, I've been seeing some uh, MLS talking heads who are going to be working with Apple TV posting like studio pictures. So I'm like, where's the studio show? Like that's available and it's not available yet. Right. But from the pictures of what the studio looks like, it looks like it's going to be really well done. And just navigating the app in general, it's it's could be a little more user, user-friendly in I terms agree. of finding the stuff that you want to find. But I also think that once the season starts, I think that'll correct itself and that'll, you'll, they'll be putting things in your face that are going to be more you know front-facing like that MLS 360 show right. um, that they're going to do. So that's that's something that I'm looking forward to. You know, Just the fact that there is so much that you could find a preview for every single team. You can find content for every single team. Like this is the this is the stuff that we've been asking for. So Enjoy. I know the price is a balking point for some, but to me, but if you've been following the league for you know as long as we have, or even if you're new to the league, like just to dump it, dump in, and have all this you know wealth of content at your fingertips. I, I'm really looking forward to this Apple deal and how it's even going to grow from here because we got to think still in its infancy. It's going to be clunky at first. There's going to right. there's going to be some you know training wheels uh, that are going to need to come off at some point. They're going to find what works, what doesn't work. So I, I'm looking forward to see how it plays out. I'll say this: enjoy these first two years because if it, things don't go well in terms of viewership and subscriptions and all the things, all of this really nice shiny stuff that you see will start to tail off and it'll go <laughs> down. And it, we we've seen it. We saw it. With we've the, lived it. Yeah. We, yeah. <laughs> this is this is this is a coming from a place of experience, right? Um, so enjoy that. I will say you you said the app needs a little bit of work. I agree, but it's very much Apple TV, and the Apple TV app needs work. Like I yeah. hate searching for stuff in Apple TV as well. A lot of times the voice search is like your only savior in some of these things. But mm-hmm. where is like my my in in the app? Where does it say here's all the here's all the old games? Click right yeah. here, and then you can go and click on all these dates, here's and you can shows. go watch. Yeah, you know, it's like. I still can watch the last game, the preseason game, and it's there, but it's like it's in my recently viewed. That's why it's there. Otherwise, how would I get to that? Where would I go yeah. to find that? And that's what I want to see. And and the other interesting thing, because I'm a sicko, because once Taylor Twelman brings up Zlatan, I was like, oh, let me go relive the glory days of that uh, open, you know, that debut that he had. It, you know, I was able to find it, but it linked to like classic classic matches, and there was something from like 1997, and then another one from you know 2002. It, well, there wasn't like a clean <laughs> right. transition. It just seemed like it was plugged in the middle. It took me there. It right. felt, uh, it, you know, it landed where I wanted to go, but it just seemed like the way they had it organized was a little bit clunky. Yeah, for sure. Uh, by the way, shout out to Herb, uh, Big Daddy Herb, uh, $18 and 70 cents. I don't know. Like, what does it mean? What does I, it mean? Herb? I don't. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he's always, he's always throwing out these things. And I know there's like, sometimes like they, it takes away, you know, a, a cent. Or it does some different things and like rounding whenever it does things. But I'm always like, so did you mean something else? Uh, but anyway, Herb says, uh, hey, Josh, hope the baby is doing well. He's sick, but also doing very well on potty training. So I'm I'm a happy camper right now. Uh, he's, he'll be okay. Uh, he just says, hey, Hammer, nice jersey. Uh, will there be a hype video? Shout out to Mike Gray as well, who's in the chat room. Big shout out to Mike. Uh, do you think maybe you'll do a preview? I don't know. Well, maybe. You know, uh, it might be might be ready to do yeah. a preview if, 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 if Skype allows. And then, you know, a hype video. You know, I, I, I've taken a backseat to those, but it's the home opener. It's against our rivals. There there might be something, you know, coming down the line. Yeah, you never know. I mean, and just so you know, if you're sitting in your seats, if you're watching the show right now, we could literally do a game preview at any time. No, not yet. Okay. Uh, just wanted to just wanted to test the button. It is that one. Top okay. right. Top okay. right button. Good. I could this. The whole show is as soon as I hit it, Hammer has to start his preview and he won't know when it's coming. We're just going <laughs> to throw it out there. He there did not go. agree to this Juggle. at all. So, um, so that's what it is. I wanted to I'm give, I'm limber. I wanted to give another, uh, shout out Jesse Pena, uh, who has done some other design work. If you've seen some of his work on Twitter, uh, came up with a shirt and was nice enough to give me one. And so thank you, Jesse. I really appreciate this. Um, this is on his Etsy shop. It's Etsy.com, uh, Galactico. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to see Galactico. Say, great, jo- yeah, great yeah, jobs. Galactico really outpost shop, right? I'm sure you can find I'll it. I'll be quiet. Give it another clean. Okay. Clean okay. Galactico outpost shop okay that's what you want to look for and you type into uh to uh, etsy and you should be able to find it but he designed this cool like rose bowl slash old galaxy logo slash like sort of homecoming uh logo and i just i just wanted to shout him out because jesse does a lot of really cool like things and he sends me some stuff so i can see it and a lot of times i forget and so i'm i'm kind of a, a, a not a nice person in that way but i remember this time 
Uh, this shirt is the front. Uh, very nice. If you notice, that's not just a rose. It's also the old Galaxy logo, right? The Galaxy yeah. spinning in the center there, and then the five stars above. And then you have this one as well, established in 1996. So, Jesse, thank you for this. I really appreciate yeah. it. Um, it's like and, a, yeah, go ahead. So I was going to say, it's like a Where's Waldo. You know, you just keep finding all those little details. The five stars, the quasars, the, the roses. Yeah, Jesse has some really cool stuff. I know I've been fortunate to get some pins and some stickers, you know, from, from the Pinya. Pena family, some yep. galaxy diehards. So, you know, shout out to Jesse and everything he's doing. So, you know, some of us are, are boycotting by not giving the galaxy your direct funds or MLS your direct funds. So how can you still, you know, support your club and support your team without and still kind of being friendly with the boycott? It's going to people like Jesse who are, you know, putting the time in and creating some really, you know, cool resources for you. So shout out to him. Do you want to know why the LA Galaxy are going to are going to have a record breaking crowd uh, that will be a lot less probably because there's going to be a lot of people who don't show up because of weather or boycott. Uh, they're, also, they're also giving away some ta- some tickets. All right. So some tickets are out there. Um, and so I'll just sort of like click through that. I, I just showed that and then it has like a barcode on it. Now I'm afraid that that person I hope they already claimed those tickets. Nobody. <laughs> no, nobody. It's, be nice. it's, it's, it's like the, the Apple TV through T-Mobile. Like, right. so I, I don't know if it was one code for all or if that was universal. But yeah, it seemed kind of interesting. Did you figure that out? I, I was able to get a code. I, as a reporter, I was I was given this season for free. All right, I, I'll state that clearly. I was given this season full for disclosure. free. Full disclosure. Yeah, full disclosure. By the way, they should give reporters this season for free. This is the only way we can. <laughs> if track, you want them to cover, if the league, you want me yeah. to cover the league, you know. And we used to have that with um, MLS season pass. Whenever it was the. Mm. Um, or was it, what was it, MLS? Or Direct it Kick. Direct Kick. Direct yeah, but kick, it yeah. was it was the one before ESPN took it over, right? And so you would go to... It was dir- on Direct TV. It was one of those... Th- yeah, it was like, it was something. But yeah, basically, the channels, yeah. basically, it would give us the ability to go on the app and just go into games, but it didn't block out any games. They gave you a reporter one and it didn't block out any games, so I could watch any game, which is why I'm telling you that having it on Apple and having every game in one spot is amazing because all they would ever do is go, oh, I'm going here to watch the game. I don't care where it is. I'm going here to watch the game. Um, so yeah, that's where, that's sort of where, uh, where that is. So I get this for free, so but the I went to, yeah, so I went to tickets, T-Mobile. Yeah. I, so I also am a T-Mobile customer. And so I went on there and I found it and I copied a code and maybe I posted it in the discord and I would imagine somebody used it. So that was <laughs> hopefully. it. Hopefully, hopefully, you know, so um, yeah, it was, uh, it was really cool. Uh, Alex asked, by the way, where my G's media goodies are. Uh, not, not here, not here. I was told that they got delayed in shipping. Um, like, like they, they're, they are not a hundred percent, I think loaded up on all the jerseys yet. Like they have some that are out there for sale and they can do some things with them and that type of thing. But it's not like there's a whole bunch yet. I think that sort of comes like at the start of the season and they get more. So, uh, yeah. you know, I mean, and yours, I- I'm sure. Oh, it's funny. I made a tweet today and I think people took it like I was, you know, a, a little, uh, you know, burned that I didn't get a jersey box, but I was genuine. What I was saying is I've, I've, there's a, a beautiful like realization to saying, okay, I'm in the J lab, you know, earbud tier, not the, not the, uh, paddle, <laughs> what is it? Pickleball and uh, Jersey box tier. And there's, there's a, you know, a, some acceptance in knowing that. And I was genuine. Like I, I, I know where I stand. I'm not on Apple TV. I'm not talking to to Jillian Sakovitz. Like I, I know where I am in the pecking order. I'm happy that I get stuff at all. Right. So I, that wasn't like a me trying to kiss up and try to get a Jersey box. I, I know I'm, it's not coming. Yeah. I just, I, I, it's, it's just funny to say, okay, I know where I'm at. I'm not at the Jersey box level, but I'm at the the headphones and the postcard and, and I'm happy with that. I'm okay with it. Can, can I, can I also say that as of right now, I'm more uncomfortable getting that stuff than I think I have. I just, I talked about it on the Monday, but the fact that the players didn't stop to even sign autographs at the Jersey unveiling thing has really bothered me. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure I would like to give somebody the benefit of the doubt. Let's just pretend that there was benefit out that there was a miscommunication and nobody told the players. Not that I think you need to tell the players. Uh, I was talking to somebody, by the way, and they said, you know, the coach and like and the people around the team really set the tone for that stuff. Right. And there was some talk about um, like Jurgen Klinsmann on the U.S. men's national team never like made that a thing. And so Mm -hmm. then it was like the same two guys who are always out signing autographs because they wanted to and like nobody else did it because they weren't being forced to. And sometimes you're like, I know you're tired, but this is important. You need to go do this stuff. Greg doesn't doesn't have that doesn't make me believe that that's his way i imagine he is that guy who's like hey go out there but i also didn't see him at that event so right now i just feel like me getting stuff is just it is what it is i guess i don't know 
and, and you've seen a lot of it with season ticket members. You know, we've heard the story of the flip flops and uh, bucket hats and different things. So I think that's, I understand it's a different thing. It is, you know, it's not a, do I want this? It's, Hey, we were told we were going to get this gift and that gift never show up, showed up. Like that's a different, that's a different issue. You know, we, let's go back to the the famous pins of 2020. I know there was, that was a COVID oh, year. Yep. But there, mm-hmm. there was supposed to be five collectible pins. And Where are those pins? One. Yep. There's supposed to be a few more. Where, what happened to the do other you, ones? Do you they think exist? they made them? Printed? I know. I don't think they made them. I don't think they made them. I don't, I don't think, think they ever went to order. Yeah. Uh, Alexis, by the way, says, give me the stuff. I have no shame. See, that's, that's <laughs> the kind of attitude I well, need, but I'll take it. No problem. I'm just saying, I know auction it off. I don't even know what I would auction off. I feel like I should just give it away. It'll have my, it'll have my name on it. You want to get, if you want the least like coveted LA galaxy Jersey ever, it's the one that has <laughs> guessman on it and says 23. I'm just, I'm just telling you guys. Um, so anyway, when I get it, it will be hanging up back here somewhere and it will go on to make 734,000 appearances across listeners nice. and, and views. I mean, I, that's why they do. If you're wondering why people send stuff to media people, it's because of the tweets. It's because of the people who follow them. It's because of all that to generate the buzz, right? And you yeah. and I were and sh- sharing stuff today and you were like, I, I changed my mind about one kit. <laughs> Stop. I'm not going to throw you do under not, the bus. Do not share Changed that my mind about one kit because of this. And I was like, see, yeah. then it worked. So, some people wear the kit. Well, that's, that's where, <laughs> that's, that's what I'll that's say. Okay. And, and, uh, yeah, yeah. To your point and why I mentioned that comment about like Apple TV, like when they do the, the, the kick around show and you know, Andrew Wiebe is wearing his galaxy Jersey our, our galaxy fans are gonna be like, that's cool. And that's, you know, and the club is going to get more recognition there. And, and, and other, you know, media members talking about how beautiful the Jersey is like, yeah, that's why you send it. That's part of the deal. So it is what it is. I, it, I, I, and I, I'm sort of in that as well. So anyway, so th- that's what's going on. I wanted to give you a heads up as well. We know that the uh, that the broadcasting duo has been set for this game as well. Uh, Jake Zivin and Taylor Twelman. I, listen, Taylor Twelman was going to be your A-team. You, you always knew that. So it was about who was going to be paired with Taylor to make them the A-team. The A-team game is El Trafico. Uh, and like I said, go see that season preview. I think that maybe it'll make you feel a little bit better um, about Taylor Twelman and all the fun things that are going on that. Uri Rossell signing. This is one we talked about. Greg Vanny told us on Saturday night that uh, that Uri was going to be part of this. Um, I did not know, however, that his name was Oriol, O R I O L. Um, and <laughs> I, for a Spaniard, that is that's a that's a. I haven't seen that one before. I don't. I, yeah, I don't know if that's if that's a common name. It does. It feels like I haven't seen it. Yeah. So I would imagine I would. I would have known. Um, so Oriol Rossell, we've talked about him. He's thirty years old. The, here's the. The tie-ins. And Eric, you're going to talk about a really fun tie-in about how <laughs> yeah, this Yeah, all... I've got a weird, weird stat of the day. But I'm going to tell you about the tie-ins is that he was a guy who was at La Masia. Um, so that sort of puts him in the same vein as Ricky Pouge, as Victor Vasquez, right? So they're the guys as Julian Araujo and sort of, you know, in that Barcelona family. Everybody knows mm-hmm. who it is. He went and played in Portugal, which you're going to talk about. He has played for Sporting Kansas City, won an MLS Cup with them. MLS Cup experience, European experience, a defensive midfielder. And by the way, the guy has scored like two goals in, in all of his minutes yeah, and stuff like that. And people like, he's 25 games. Yeah, yeah. He scored two goals. I'm like, yeah, defensive midfielder. This dude is not anything but a defensive yeah. midfielder. So he's not coming in the game, Eric, whenever you need somebody to score a goal. He's coming into the game whenever the Galaxy want to lock something down and play it out. He is taking over, I would say, the Sasha Kleshin <laughs> role. That's, yeah. that's what I see. And he's younger. Um, he has the ability to play in that position. He had a concussion that took him out for about 10 days in the middle of camp, but it was somebody that they wanted to, um, to, to add. So, uh, he was with Orlando. He was with sporting Kansas city. Uh, why don't you tell everybody the wonderful connection that you found? <laughs> well, the, the interesting thing, and you kind of stole the word, my, my thunder there is about it being a Sasha replacement. That's what it feels like. And I think on the field, it feels like an upgrade, the locker room that's still to be determined, but you have someone with European experience, MLS cup experience knows the league uh you know is going to be able to kind of you know lean on his experience and that's something where it feels like it's a sasha replacement but those are big shoes to fill because we saw how important of a mentor sasha was to a lot of the players in the locker room last season so that's tbd if he's going to be able to have that same impact the interesting fact that i you know i was kind of doing some background research on rossell and i was finding you know where he played earlier in his career and he interestingly enough, went from sporting Kansas city to oh. sporting in Portugal to sporting CP. And from there, he you know hardly got any minutes for sporting because they're one of the top clubs in Portugal. So he got loaned out to uh, Victoria, Victoria Guimarães, which if you are familiar with that club, also known as Victoria SC, 
that is where we got a one Joao Pedro. Oh, so of course. He was on that team. So if you go back to the 2015, 2016 Vittoria Guimaraes roster, you have Oriol Rossell, who was loaned out uh, to them, Joao Pedro, who that was his club at the time, and Tyler Boyd on loan at that same club. So just a weird oddball connection. I can't... They all played in Portugal at the same time, you know, on the same team. And then they were all have an LA Galaxy connection. So he's familiar with Tyler Boyd. They know each other at least a little bit. So it just seems seems kind of weird. You want to hear the other weird thing? He was born in. Did you see where he was born in? Yeah. In the Puj Rich span. Do you say Puj Rich? Is that what it is? I, I imagine that's how you say it. I don't know. I didn't know how to say Ricky Puj whenever Ricky yeah. Puj came in. I, so I would imagine. But yeah, the Puj Rich in, in Spain. So, I mean, there's that tie in too. I just... The the amount of this is like six degrees with Kevin Bacon only like it is Kevin Bacon and there's only two degrees separating everybody. Right. Like it's the next thing. Everybody is yeah. tied together here. I like it. Depth signing. Good. Experienced guy. Think he's going to give you the minutes. He had 900 minutes last year. Um, not a lot. Right. And you won't. Ex- yeah. I wouldn't expect well, them to. Yeah. 900 minutes. That's that. That's how much it took Dayan Jovalich to score 10 goals. So don't expect that. But, uh, you know, expect them to spot fill. Think about how much Sasha played. Uh, maybe you'll need to rotate him in a little bit more in the midfield, but uh, I don't think you'll be seeing tons of minutes. So that's why you can't be, you, you can't get mad at this type of signing because it's, you know, someone who's going to be at a lower salary, going to be at, at an old, they're not going to be a starter day in, day out. So you need guys like this. You need guys who have that experience, who have, who are going to be those locker room guys. It seems like the way Vanny talked about him, that he, he does, he's an intelligent player. And you, when you see some of those key words, like those are the guys like, the coaches, you know, teachers, pets or coaches, pets, the guy who they disseminate the message through these type of players. And then even though they're not the starters, they're the ones who kind of infect the other players with their ideas. Right. So that's 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 this is the type of guy who I feel like Rossell will be. Um, Let's see. I'm trying to think of where to go next. Let's go to rumors uh, because rumors <laughs> There's a lot are of places to go. There is. And I still have a lot of stuff to talk about. Let's go to rumors next. Uh, Tom Bogert earlier today before we got on the air sources, the LA Galaxy have completed the acquisition of right back Lucas Caligari from Fluminense pending medical deals alone with a purchase option around two millions. Caligari will join LA when visas come through. It is our understanding based on his social media and looking at it yesterday. This is his wife, I believe. Uh, it is her saying goodbye to all their friends because they were getting on an airplane. And we do believe that Lucas is also in that general area and headed towards Los Angeles. Now, uh, that could be that it could be that he's waiting for his visa to come in before he actually goes and shows up. That's a possibility. The other possibility is that he will fly in. A lot of times you can come in under a tourist visa or, or like a business mm-hmm. visa. As long as you're not getting paid in, within that country, you're okay to visit for a certain number of days, right? So he can come in, he can sign the contract, he can get his medical, he can do all that, and then they can arrange that visa for him. Sometimes the guys have to go out and come back in, they and go sometimes out and back in, and sometimes or, they or can to stay by country. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and sometimes they can stay too so uh but this is 20 year old right back he has played a little left back mostly right back uh there's there's a lot of positives to his game there's some of the negatives the only thing that i see is i think there's a lot of julian araujo in him which is yeah which is good which is what you want to see right i do not see getting to the end line as much as julian araujo was able to if you look at his heat maps if you look at sort of where he makes the crosses and does the things he tends to make crosses near the at top of the box more on that line than he is uh, sort of more towards the end. And so the Galaxy are used to getting fed from that end. Uh, one of the biggest pieces the LA Galaxy have to replace isn't necessarily Julian Araujo on defense. It's Julian Araujo on offense with his, did he have nine assists last year, I think? Yeah. Yes, that's he's led the team in assists. So that's the part that they have to do. It's not just the right back. It's also about, you know, finding that assist person and, and the defense and everything else that, that is sort of associated with that. I think his defense will be fine. This kid That's, feels like he has a lot of upside. I'm I'm excited to see him play. Yeah, if if Rossell is the Sasha question replacement, this is I mean it's very obvious. It's obviously the Julian Araujo replacement. But you can also spin what you just said about the going forward. He probably doesn't have as much as Julian has. But what the trade off is is you're getting a better defender or a more solid defender. So I think the defense could be you know equal if not better. Uh, than Araujo. And again, we're not, we're putting the cart before the horse here, but it's just something that the potential upside is there. You see a lot of that possibility. Someone who is highly touted, got some real minutes uh, with, with his Brazilian club. But I think another possible solution to that is Araujo obviously got forward and led the team in assists last season. I think some of this could be replaced with Tyler Boyd as well, because if he's able to fill in that role and able to whip in those crosses, then that solves that problem. 
Kevin Cabral last season, while he was able to get his his breakaways and make his runs, he wasn't really, you know, putting balls in out wide. Same thing with Douglas Costa. Costa was, you know, making moving, making moves, cutting inside, but the service wasn't really Costa's specialty. So uh, Tyler Board, I see him as the type of guy who can kind of fill that assist role uh, coming up in this season. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm looking up. When did they announce Tyler Boyd? Was that on Tuesday? I was going to say, is that is that new I, news? That's what have I, you, have, I, was, I, th- I think it was after the show. Yeah, I think it wasn't official because you talked about how on, uh, you know, at the Jersey unveiling, he was one of the first interviews, but he still hadn't technically been announced as an LA Galaxy player. So, yeah, that may have been after your Monday show. It was, let's see, no, February it, was, 20th. it was on Monday. LA Galaxy signed midfielder Tyler okay. Boyd. We had it. Okay, okay. it was good. We're, we're good. It was in the neighborhood. Like, everybody's, we're good. He's there. He's playing. He's available. He will probably play. I don't know if he starts just because of his uh, fitness and sort of where he sits with that. So um, we'll watch that again. That'll be something to sort of see how he fits into this team and whether or not he eventually takes over that starting role. Um, all of those things uh, now come into this. Here's the here's the rub. Tomorrow is roster compliance date. All right. Now, unlike years past, the LA Galaxy, as far as I know, are 100 percent roster compliant right now. I don't see any reason why they wouldn't be roster compliant. They have the correct number of international slots, I believe. They have the total number of, of uh, designated players. They have two, and they can have a maximum of three. Uh, they have, with two designated players and an open spot, they're allowed to have three U22 players, right? So all of these things, and we expect that Lucas Caligari is a U22 signing um, whenever he comes in. Uh, it's a one-year loan. Uh, I don't know if we've said that exactly. One-year loan. And people ask, why would you go with a one-year loan with an option to buy? Because you get to rent the car for a year and decide whether or not you want to buy it, right? That's really the 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 bonus on this. Um, so that's where we think that's going on. So roster compliance, not an issue, Eric. So what about international slots? I believe Cal- Caligari, does he need... One he, or do they have one? He, he will need one. Spare? I don't know where they get it, but eventually <laughs> th- that's why probably they haven't announced yeah. the signing, right? The whole deal. I think they're eight of eight right now. Okay. Um, that's what so, I thought as well. So I yeah. think they do need to, you know, you're going to see some gam fly somewhere. They Come haven't on. signed yeah. Cal- Caligari yet, so they don't need it, right? That's yeah. that's one of those things. And I'm sure part of the announcement will be, hey, watch, watch in the next like three or four days, there will be a pre-move. That will be yeah. like Orlando City trades an international slot to LA Galaxy for X number and ge- X number of general allocation money, right? And that will be your hint that an international player is on the way in. In the next ten minutes, yeah, when, yeah, exactly. That, right, yeah. that's announced, and then yeah, a few minutes later you'll get the get the real deal. Right, exactly. So the whole deal. Now, here is I said they're roster compliant. Here is the only thing, and this is conspiracy theory. I want to be very clear. I have no inside knowledge of this. I am just looking at things and I'm saying what yeah, could possibly read, happen. Reading the room. Yeah. I'm reading the room. I'm saying what if Douglas Costa has been very MIA this preseason, very MIA and Vanny when talking about his injury, which supposedly is a calf injury of some sort was very vague on the calf injury. It was just sort of like, we're watching his calves and it's sort of like, okay, well, does that, does that mean anything? <laughs> right. And you're sort of like, Say, okay, that, that means something very different here in Texas. Right. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure it does. Um, it's a cow, it's a cow joke. Yeah. Everybody, yeah. I just, I, you know how I just say <laughs> some people, someone's going to take that and <laughs> they're going to be upset. Um, right, fair so, uh, you know, so I'm just saying he's been very MIA. There is still a possibility. And if this was to happen, it has to happen tomorrow before the roster compliance deadline is the LA galaxy who could buy out Douglas Costa. The other reason that I think that's still a possibility is that we've heard the ISCO rumor. I'm not saying it's my favorite rumor in the whole wide world. I'm not saying the LA Galaxy should do it. I do believe in my heart of hearts that if you traded Isco for Costa, that you probably came out ahead on that one. Just because I think that Isco was a more available player than Douglas Costa. Still over the hill. Like I'm still, yeah. you're still on that backside. I'm just saying it's not a horrible idea. All right. It's it's very similar to the Kevin Cabral move. You know, before we had any idea who was going to come in at winger. Is the Galaxy better off with Kevin Cabral off the team with nobody in that spot as opposed to Kevin Cabral being there? Same thing with Douglas Costa. Are the Galaxy better off with Douglas Costa off the team regardless of who they bring in? And even if it's Isco who you're not thrilled about, you know, maybe you would rather have had a player like Di Maria. But is it an upgrade from Costa? You know, I think so. I think I, so. I would, I would back you up on that. I'm like, I don't know, like this. Like, it's yeah. not like, it's not like it's this. Not a huge it's, difference. It's, and like Costa, this. Costa wasn't a complete 
dummy last season. Like he had, right. he had some moments and he turned it on late and had, had some free kicks and, you know, played with that fire and led the team in red cards. Uh, so that was kind of an interesting wrinkle, but he, he wasn't a total dud. There were, there were flashes and moments in there. He just wasn't near, you know, DP level or, you know, the expectation that he's kind of set for himself over his career. Yeah. And there was obviously, he was going to go to union Berlin, right? That was where he was going to go. And then apparently he changed. Isco, yeah. Yeah. yeah Is- Isco was going to go to union Berlin and then change the terms of that contract. We had heard it was after the medical. So it was assumed it was a medical failure, but it wasn't. He basically was like, no, I need more money now. Like, you know, we're good. Yeah. I pass my medical. I pass him a medical. It's so <laughs> yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. Look at my lungs. Right. So, um, so that, so as far as we know, perfectly healthy and can pass a medical, right. That's really all, 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 we really know on that front that's what he wants you to know but the there was a rumor out there that basically said isco had until the 24th to make a decision and that's a very interesting tidbit if it's true because the 24th is the roster deadline the transfer is april 24th right so they still have plenty of time to bring people in but it's the compliance date so the uh whatever that time is i would imagine to issue a buyout of a player the the other thing that we're of all the conversations that douglas costa is having Right. And I'm like, OK, well, then that means and that you're, fine with, you're yeah. fine with him leaving. <laughs> right. It's so, they're in an open relationship. I yeah. think that's what they call it. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Yeah. He's, <laughs> he's allowed to. He's allowed to. If he had. What was it? What was the exact like? I was trying to think the exact wording that he used. But basically, I was like, was was he did. Was there any doubt in his mind that uh, of what this Douglas Costa situation was? And he was like, no doubt. I, I know 100 percent. And in a long time, again, tinfoil hat. I fully. Yeah. I. I, I, I I think 20% chance this happens. Just, I wouldn't be surprised. Player who's currently on his roster. Of course, he's going to say, I know exactly what's going on. But he was also the one who said, yeah, we got some players coming in. And then, you know, a month went by and we don't have any players coming in until finally, you know, the floodgates kind of open. Or the internet again, apparently, <laughs> as, it, as it went. Fun um, times. We got one from Soul Echoes 499 in the Super Chats. Thank you, Soul. It says, I read a comment saying that the boycott is happening because if, if it's going to be over after the Rose Bowl game, I don't know if that's true or not, but I, I'll to this idea, and I've seen it floating around that the Galaxy supporters, <laughs> the Galaxy supporter groups are a proud group, and this is gonna. There's a, um, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know what the word is, but like the, this false sense that they're bigger than what they are because the you know their home stadium is a smaller stadium, and so you know 20 pounds of manure looks in a 10 pound bag looks really full and it's like, man, this place is, is happening. But people, you know, have it be a hot ticket, but that doesn't mean that Los Angeles as a whole, Southern California as a whole, there's tons of fans looking in there. So the joke I made it, you know, I like the, I like that you think that there's, you know, there's 70,000 uh, LAFC fans in Southern California. That's, that's a very cute uh, idea that you have, you know, when you think about the, as a whole, the whole population. So I, I don't, I don't think it's, because of them being outnumbered. This has been a rumbling. Klein out did not start, you know, this season. Klein out has been a movement. And I think the extension was the, you know, the straw that broke the camel's back. And that's what caused it. I don't think it has anything to do with the neighbors cross down. Yeah, very well. Very well. Could be. And, and uh, you know, I think I, I agree with you on that. Uh, the other super chat we got was Tim and Tim asked, uh, where are the good places to watch the game? Uh, I, you know, I know the supporters groups have thrown out a couple different places um, to go and and see. So that's that's always a chance. We did stop the stream, restarted the stream. Oh, uh, I was on a good run, too. I know. I, I, I said I was freezing. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. It's it's turn it off and back on everything. Uh, I would just like everybody to know that I have uh, a 42 Mbps upload speed right now, and yet still getting errors on YouTube and all that fun stuff. So, <laughs> well, someone said once the 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 Klein, uh, the Klein out treatment started getting said, that's when it started to get patchy. So the power of AEG, yeah, uh, hard at work here. Yeah, it's it, it <laughs> we'll we'll see about that. So anyway, if everybody has, um, if anybody has the uh, the the hookups, where to go watch uh, those things, you can drop it in the chat. Over here, we'll try to cover some of those, and we'll continue on with the show as it goes. Um, yeah, there'll be some viewing parties, definitely. That that's the thing. Yeah, yeah, uh, I know that that's the case. Uh, one of the things that MLS did was they had a 3D window, uh, and I, I don't know. I mean, I think it's pretty cool. The Galaxy sort of got top billing here. The Galaxy have two players that um, they got featured in this, both Chicharito and Jonathan Bond. Uh, it was a 3D window that is at the is in uh, in Times Square, I believe, um, and so it's this screen. Uh, that wraps it. It feels like it wraps around a corner. It does wrap around a corner. <laughs> like I'm really. I told if you, Eric. If you told me it didn't wrap around the corner, I'd believe you. Yeah, I, I, it's there's there's some illusionary happening here. I don't like it. It freaks me out every time I watch it. I feel like I'm like I'm like, how did this work? Does this thing even like you know? This it's it's yeah. 
It, it's one of those weird things. Um, so yeah. yeah, I know how it works, and it still trips me out. And it still trips me out, and I watch it. But it was uh, yeah. Jonathan Bond and Chicharito on there. Elias Sanchez, I believe, was the other player who was uh, featured for LAFC. But it was basically an MLS season pass thing um, that was coming on. And just a reminder, uh, one of the fun things that I did, and here here it is, uh, is it's crazy. I usually do all these game previews, and I look at this stuff, and I say, hey, oh, the LA Galaxy, LAFC, and here it is, and here's where they're playing. And then I have to find out which t- where it is on TV and what time the kickoff is and all this other stuff. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, it's all the games are on season pass. That's that's it. We can we can start, we can end, we can do everything right yeah. there is on season pass. Not only that, but there has been rumors out there that the games are going to start when they say the games are going to start. <laughs> all right? I don't I don't want to freak anybody out here, but very well could be a 6:30 or right around their kickoff time for El Tráfico at the Rose Bowl. Um, I think it was one of the things Apple was sort of looking at, and it was one of the things, obviously, that drives fans absolutely bonkers with some of this stuff. And it's it's how most of the world works. When you say the game is at this time, you you tune in at this time. And, you know, it works with Champions League. It doesn't have to be right at the half hour or the hour mark. They'll say Champions League game is starting at 1150. Like, it's okay. People can handle that. They understand what that means. So I am happy to see that that's going to be the case. So if it says 630, the game, the ball will be rolling at 6:30 and one second. So that is very exciting. And the, the always, the thing that always drove me crazy is that, well, you can go to the website and you can, you know, go to MLS.com and click on the game and then click on the preview and you'll see the kickoff time. It's there. But it's like, I, yeah, but, do, do, <laughs> but that do, doesn't make sense. Do they realize <laughs> that they took away one of my only useful things was everybody asked me what time kickoff was real kickoff time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I was always like, it's kicking off this time. All right. You're okay. Everybody's fine. We're all going to survive. <laughs> um, real quick on, like on AI. It is <laughs> uh, real quick. They could do that. They could. Uh, wow. Man. Chat GPT. <laughs> Maybe chat GPT could do this podcast from here on out. I, I feel like, yeah, the chat GPT is going to write a game preview eventually. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's going to be uh, going to be. Uh, I think we should just let it do it. In fact, next time, let's just have it write a game preview. A dramatic, <laughs> do a dramatic game preview in the style of Eric, the Portuguese <laughs> hammer. Let's see if it'll. And it's like, who? Yeah, uh, that, chat... That's definitely what it'll say. <laughs> Um, so that guy doesn't even get a Jersey. Yeah, exactly. We don't even know who he is, uh, (laughs) renewed through 2030. Uh, the LA galaxy and Adidas have now, uh, up their, their sponsorship, uh, of, of this. So Adidas again with the jerseys, by the way, best probably Jersey. Everybody says it. I will leave that to the, to the kit man in here. That's more, but everybody says that this is probably the best set of Adidas kits in major league soccer ever. And I I think I probably agree. Yeah, correct. The, from Adidas, like dropping as a full slate of, for the whole league since they've taken over the jersey sponsorship, this is the best slate of jerseys that they've dropped. The personalization for each club, the you know attention to detail. I think a few seasons ago, people were really disappointed with just the plain white T-shirts and everyone getting the same template. There's you, you're not going to get away from the template and the kind of cookie cutter version because these jerseys do need to be mass produced. But you can add, you know, little pieces of flair, you know, and, and all these little details that are going to make the fans appreciative. And I think Adidas listened to the fans and their regard. In ter- uh, now, in terms of the deal being extended, I don't have an issue with it because it allows for consistency. You know what you're going to get. Uh, in terms of the jerseys, you don't have to, from a league perspective, you don't have to worry about, well, Colorado couldn't find a jersey sponsor. So they're now playing in, you know, uh, you know, you know, <laughs> what, what's the, you know, the Liga MX, uh, not to not to bash them, but those Charlie jerseys always they're They're very fun, but it just seems like they're a little a little more hokey. You don't have to worry about that. Um, so this goes back to that single entity thing an open market where some teams have Nike, some teams have Adidas. That's more, you're in the big boy club, you're in the real world. That's the way it should work. But because of the single entity, I don't have an issue with it. And Adidas in the past two to three years, uh, maybe even four to five years, they've been making better jerseys as compared to Nike in terms of the personalization. So I'm fine with keeping Adidas as is, uh, you know, through 2030. I think they're doing a good job with the league. It allows for consistency from the league perspective. Eventually, you want to see that open market, right. but maybe that's when single entity goes away. And if that doesn't, then you're going to keep seeing deals like this. The, the problem is that, you know, you would have, uh, it's not the big teams. It's never the big team issues, right? Because I think we can agree the LA Galaxy could find either Adidas or Nike or one of the majors yep. to give them their, to, to sponsor their jerseys. But when you look at like some of the, like Colorado, like Colorado's going to end up having buying their stuff from like Dick's Sporting Goods in order to yeah. like get their shirts. That's where right? I was going. And, and shout out to the chat. They were, they were giving me the, the off brands, you know, Joma. Hummel, Kappa, 
you know, Macron, all, right. all these ones that are just a, li- a little bit off. Just a little bit. Just so, but yeah. those are also – But Hummel be... makes really good quality. Like it's not to say they don't make good quality. They, they just, just don't have the big names. Yeah. Right, right, right. Exactly. 100%. Um, so so that's something that's there. Um, I wanted to point out that we talked at one point, I know earlier this season, about um, just looking at the uh, how you would be able to watch these games at – bars because technically there wasn't like a you know most bars don't have apple tv you know yeah. that type of thing. there wasn't a business version of this and usually you have to have business versions mls apple tv partnered with direct tv business which features a lot of uh, bars do have that and basically i've heard flat fee 100 bucks i think it's 100 a month that's what would make the most sense to me but 100 dollars a month for them so that's 1200 dollars. it's not a ton of money whenever you consider probably the operating budgets of most bars yeah. to be able to have uh this thing and I mean, I'm still of the opinion that if you have a fire stick and you can like, you know, go to a website, you can stream these games <laughs> the, kind of wherever you want yeah. for now on. Um, not that's technically yeah. not legal, but I will I will say that it's probably something that could happen. OK, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're not going to have the FCC come in and, you know, break down bars because they, they have an Apple TV connected to their bar. I, so. I would st- let me tell you a quick story. That'd so, be a fun job. So, you know how, like, they always said, and especially whenever we were growing up, there was always, like, you, you would be watching sporting events. It's like, you cannot watch this without the yeah. the express written consent of the NBA and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and so I was watching, like, TV when I was probably 10 or something like that. I was watching it and the whole deal. And dad, my dad goes, well, you know, he goes, we get this illegally. I'm like, what? He goes, <laughs> he goes, like he, goes <laughs> he goes, he goes, he goes, yeah, he goes, we, we don't even pay for this. We're stealing it right now, right? He's totally joking, right? Not true. The whole deal. He goes, he goes, I just, I just hope they don't like come knock on the door and like come, come take me away. Or actually, yeah. you know what? If they come, I'm going to tell them, right? Yeah. They, right. And so I, of course that night I go and I listen and I'm like, and I lay down in the bed and I'm there and I'm like, and, my, and all of a sudden I hear the, the knocking, the dunk, 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 dunk on the front door. And I'm like, Oh my God, they're coming to get us. And it was, my dad was like messing with me. I, I really, uh, I really enjoyed that because well, I thought I was stealing TV. Nice. Yeah. The, we're, we're dating ourselves here, but you, you also remember the FBI warning on every VHS tape, like FBI, FBI is involved in my copy of the Lion King. Like this is, this is serious business. I don't know what happened here. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. And, and then of course, you know, Napster ruined that, oh, you know, if you're a child yeah, of the like, early oh, okay. 2000s, yeah. like, I have to pay for stuff. What's this all about? <laughs> it's very, it's a very different world. I remember Napster and my and my buddy like burning me a CD, and he's like, "Here you go, man." Like, where'd you get this stuff? He goes, "Napster." I'm like, "These are stolen, <laughs> right?" Yeah, I'm, I'm, I've always been oh. a rule follower. In case you haven't noticed, um, <laughs> let's so anyway. So that's the direct TV business thing is going on there. Uh, let's talk about Efrain Alvarez, Mister. I got a dietitian, Mister. I got a personal <laughs> trainer, Mister. Now I'm going to change my shirt to seven. Uh, it's a slimming number. It is. Yeah. It is. <laughs> I'm going to say something that I do not condone, but I do think is funny. All right. Can we just, that's that I, it's one of those things. Somebody said that basically, careful. I know, Be very careful. I know it's, but he was talking about Efrain Alvarez and so it's E a seven. And when you look at those things together, it kind of says oh. eat, right? Okay. I just saying, I think that's funny. It's not nice, but I think it's funny. And also then he, this particular person followed it up with, with that means he's going to cook on the field and cook off the field and like all I like other it. stuff. I like it. So <laughs> F. Ryan Alvarez out to eat, not eat, not eat bad food, eat yeah. the competition eat this the year. Competition. This I, I like is it. his year. This is his yeah. year. I like <laughs> the, that. This is the year that is trademarked by Corner of the Galaxy. <laughs> T-shirts are coming. <laughs> right. Uh, but, but he's had a solid preseason. The the wings are empty, so the opportunity for him to to kind of take a starting spot or to to become more effective, this really could be the year. You know, I'm hopeful. You know, Vin, Vin Scully used to always say in the off season, you know, hope springs eternal because you know no games have been played and so anything could happen. That's kind of Efrain Alvarez right now. You know, no games have started, so we're we're hopeful that this this could be the year. Yeah, it's a, this it, this this is the year. This is the year. <laughs> Earlier in the week, Chicharito out at training. Uh, and the report came out that he had left early. Kevin Baxter was out there as well. He left early trainers next to him. He was was still whole deal. There was some other stuff that I also know was sort of happening. So whenever I heard this, I was like, okay, he's not playing, 
right? We, I mean, this is it. You can't get hurt on a Tuesday and then come back and play. You know, you can't re-injure or continue to injure this this calf or this hamstring issue. It's a hamstring. Yeah, and hamstrings it, are tricky. Yeah, yeah that's right? a really nasty one. And it's going to be cold, which is like the worst thing for a hamstring. It's yeah. going to be wet, which is the worst thing for a hamstring, right? The whole thing. So you're already like, he's not happening. Uh, Delmi had report basically, and Greg Vanny was like, hey, not trending like he will be available. We're still working on it day to day. You know, there's still some information we're trying to get. So that was earlier today. And then again, about, oh, 30 or 40 minutes after that, Chicharito goes out and uh, puts out a post on Instagram and says lots of not so positive feelings. This is translated, by the way, so it's not going to be perfect. Uh, mm-hmm. Lots of not so positive feelings about the injury that will prevent me from spending some time with my team. We have to support and encourage and one each other and uh, encourage in another way. This Saturday, all together, let's support our team to start the season in the best way. So Chicharito out for El Trafico. Uh, and that's about as definitive as you're going to get, yeah. you know, this many days before it. But no Chicharito there. Um, yeah, that's going to be, that's going to hurt a lot. Um, the, the one issue I have with this is Vanny was telling us without telling us he's not trending towards starting. So we, I don't think, you know, after seeing how he went off of training and limping on, on stage, uh, you know, during the, the Jersey unveiling event, it wasn't looking good for Chicharito, but I think Vanny was still playing the game. And, And this is funny where we get into this. Well, why, why isn't the team transparent? Why don't they tell us what's <laughs> what's actually happening? But this is one of those scenarios where you do need to do a little bit of gamesmanship. And so for Chicharito to come out and say, hey, it's not looking good. I'm not going to play. Like It kind of goes against what Vanny said just earlier in training. Right. So I, there's a little bit of friction there. I don't I don't like that part of it. What if he shows up now, though? Maybe this was a misdirect. Maybe Chicharito <laughs> is fine, and this is all gamesmanship to start with. What if Who's Chicharito the- comes out there sprinting onto the field just before the game starts? He sprints out there. It's like, <laughs> he's like, Daniel LaRusso is going to play? Daniel LaRusso <laughs> is going to play! And Chicharito comes roaring out of there. Yeah, uh, we need Miyagi. We need Miyagi backstage. Give us <laughs> that's, that's, that's what we special have. special hamstring what, treatment. Yeah, that is who, what we've been missing, room. right? That is what yeah. we've been... What exactly happened to Daniel LaRusso? What, like, did he break a rib? Like, and what did Mr. Miyagi do? Like, what was the actual injury? I want the injury (laughs) report from the, uh, okay. You want it? It was, it was a, a, a muscle strain in the oblique In the oblique and Miyagi Miyagi provided heat, heat therapy, which relaxed the muscle just long enough so he can compete in the final. That's my story. I feel like that sounds, that sounds (laughs) great music, by the way. Um, what is it? The all Valley. Uh, it, all I remember is that it reminds me of the Coachelli Valley, Valley Invitational. Yeah. Right? It is the All Valley Invitational. Yeah, I think it's All Valley Invitational. There we go. Okay, I'm glad we went on that little uh, <laughs> little sidetrack there. So anyway, so that's not happening. That's going to the zone. Athletic. We're getting there. We're getting to the game. Yeah, you didn't think this. Show. You didn't think this was a short two hours show. Left. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say. Yeah, this is. We're in. Welcome <laughs> to the first hour of three, boys and girls. Um. We are, uh, the athletic put out there. What I always enjoy is their, uh, anonymous survey, uh, to team executives and sort of how those fill out, how those go about the LA galaxy mentioned a lot in these. So we're going to cover some of these. Let's do them quickly though. I don't want to spend forever doing this. I also have like 20 of these slides, so we don't need to cover everything. And if I click on one, maybe I'm like, that one's not that important. Let's go with some of the things they asked MLS executives, which team will win MLS cup 10 votes for the Philadelphia union, by the way, 10 votes for the Philadelphia union. <laughs> and then this is the year. I mean, it feels like this is the year where they get over the hump. And then LAFC isn't even in the next highest vote getter in that thing. That's crazy to me. That's actually very disrespectful to LAFC. Whenever <laughs> you think of like what they were able to want a supporter shield, want an MLS cup. And they're like, Oh, the guys who didn't win either of those last year, they're going to win it this year. And Listen, I think LAFC has not gotten better so far in this offseason yet. So that's something we can talk about. Yeah. But Philadelphia. And we'll get there in the game preview. Too, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Philadelphia has, I think, stayed the same or, or you know, gotten gotten better. So you're going to see a lot of Philadelphia love in this. So Philadelphia was the team that was voted to, to, be, uh, to win MLS Cup the most. Atlanta United was second. Austin and LAFC. And oh, wait, which one is that? It was Oh, the LA Galaxy. That's right. Are Two tied votes. for third. Are tied for third. So. That's where uh, the LA got. We uh, Eric is convinced that like you're allowed to vote for your own team, and that the <laughs> LA Galaxy only... kept voting for their own team. That's we're, what we're going to keep showing the slides and showing the screenshot. There's some of these that, unless you work for the LA Galaxy and you want to pump yourself up, I don't know who else would give that answer. The right. only other possible explanation is that Robin Frazier was involved, and he really likes his friend Greg Vanny, and right. he's trying to pump him up. That's the only other, you know, <laughs> my my side theory there. But otherwise, you know, some of these make sense. Like MLS Cup, two people, 
I could see people looking at Ricky Pouge and, and Chicharito scoring goals. And we could talk about that with some other things, but I could see, you know, that happening. But some of these other votes that the Galaxy got, interesting. Makes you makes you scratch your head. Uh, the, which team won the Supporter Shield? Philadelphia, eight votes. At least LAFC came in second on this one with seven votes. So, <laughs> well, was... you know what that tells me, and it's kind of funny. And it was our, you know, diss on LAFC all these years. Is yeah, went to the Supporter Shield, but come playoffs, you know, you, you can't make the deep run. And I think this, <laughs> the executives still kind of feel that way. Yeah. Uh, by the way, super chat from six, uh, ten dollars super chat. You got, you're doing a great job, guys. Good job. See, like I like the positive encouragement we're getting. I like it during the show. Um, are you guys ever going back into the studio? Uh, Hammer would have a really long. Commitment mute if we went I was going to say I'm in the studio this is it this yeah. <laughs> I was going <laughs> to maybe for a visit yeah yeah if, if we make it work in the future should I continue to do this show on a regular basis which I will say is mentally challenging for me many times over what you guys probably would expect it to be um mostly cuz I'm not that smart uh if we did it I have plans to build out a studio within my house like a fully formed production studio that was similar to what I had at my office. My office still looks the same, by the way. I go to it every day. Uh, LA Galaxy scarves all over the place, uh, planes, trains, automobiles, everything else in there. I once made fun of one of my uh, one of my employees because they had like this little like toy on their desk. I'm like, look at you. You got a toy. And they're like, have you seen your office? I'm like, well played. <laughs> yeah, read well, the room. Again. <laughs> well played, sir. Um, so anyway, yeah, I, I think we're probably staying here for a little while. Um, I know everybody likes it. You really, you don't even see my, like, you don't see it that much. That's the whole thing. It's like every, yeah. it's this little tiny box in here. And, anyway. and that's the funny, yeah, that's the funny thing. You see all the curated goodies I was gonna that say. I have back there and I, I balk it the whole time. So here, well, <laughs> maybe I'll give a tour. Yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. I'll give a tour on my Instagram yeah. of everything that I have in there. Uh, but yeah, I'd basically just cover it up instead of showing all the cool things I have on my shelf there. Yeah, that's, that's what I did too. So, uh, anyway, so we, we did that, uh, Reiki therapy, by the way, is Mr. Miyagi. I, know. I didn't, Architecto I didn't know. Called me out. Yeah. My, my bad. Okay. That's on me. That's, that's on, on me. That's on I'll you. Take that one. It's preseason for you still. You're yeah. still, still stretching <laughs> it out. Um, they talked a little bit. I wanted to say this was something they said about the Philadelphia Union. This was an executive. Remember, these are anonymous. I, this has to be Bruce Arena. I'm just, I don't really think so, but just <laughs> like read this in Bruce Arena's voice and tell me it's not Bruce Arena. It has to be somebody in the, in the East. The thing is, they're not even that expletive good. One executive said, it's kind of hurts me to pick them. All they do is kick the crap out of you. They're always ready to play. That's great. That's good coaching, all that stuff, but they're just not great. They have a way of doing things and they're consistent, but it's not like the quality is amazing. So it hurts me to pick them, but they've kind of earned it. <laughs> it's like the most backhanded compliment. <laughs> <But> <laughs> like, it is so true because I, Philadelphia doesn't do anything amazing. flashy, but they, no. all they do is kick your, or your, your, your bottom. Sorry. Family yeah. show. Yeah, it is. Apparently. Um, what was the best move signing hiring trade of the off season? Notice the LA galaxy aren't on that list. The best one. And this, and the executive said it was Atlanta hiring Garth Lagerway. Remember we were big advocates of the yeah. LA galaxy hiring Garth Lagerway. What's it like to hire a new president? It must be fun. Uh, yeah. which team had the best off season LA galaxy tied for fourth in this one. Toronto had the best off season, uh, tied with Orlando city. Toronto was, was Sean Johnson and some other pieces that they've sort of moved around in there. And so I can see why Toronto sort of gets up there, but People are saying the LA Galaxy. Now, it was funny because the authors came in here and basically said it's by subtraction for the LA yeah. Galaxy, not addition, right? That's what we um, said about Cabral, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's basically Cabral because you look at Tyler Boyd was probably not a done deal at the time, so the only ones that you saw was Memo and um, and Chris Mavinga. Mavinga, right, yeah. yeah. And so they were like, Form okay. Two, yeah. Yeah, they're like, oh, good enough for me. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. I'm cruising through these. Uh, which ownership group is the best? Number one, Arthur Blank in Atlanta. Okay, nine votes. Uh, tied for second Phil Anschutz, LA Galaxy, and then, of course, the trio at LAFC. Interesting takes on this. Here's what they said. Mansudo and Anschutz haven't had much recent success, and it could be argued that they should be less patient with their executives than they have been, but issues at the fire and the Galaxy aren't down to a lack of funding from their owners. Mansudo, what one executive said, is really prepared to do anything for the fire. Anschutz gives the Galaxy a similar amount of resources, though the club hasn't done well under the leadership of longtime president Chris Klein. This was the quote. He gives them the autonomy to do as they please. That's Anschutz, one executive said of Anschutz. Whether or not he has the right people doing that is a different question, but he gives them time and he gives them autonomy. They just need to go find a general manager. They need to identify a true GM to run that place. That is what a other MLS executive <laughs> said about the it's LA Galaxy. Do not come and tell me that we are seeing something that nobody else is seeing. 
everybody in the league. I have fielded national media types texting me and asking me questions about the LA Galaxy and how they're still in the position that they're in. This is not something that is isolated. Everybody in the league is talking about it. Everybody's talking about the yeah. fan boycott. Just so you know, behind the scenes, yeah. everybody's asking about the fan boycott. This is what I get questions on all the time. Everybody's ask, asking about Chris Klein. Everybody's asking about the front office. Everybody's asking why Greg Vanny has 7,000 jobs, right? And all that stuff. Greg Vanny, by the way, joking today, he was announced as sporting director and LA Galaxy head coach. And he goes, he, and after it was done, there was a little bit of quiet. He goes, actually, I'm looking for two more titles. Right? Like he was like, he was like, like let's, let's find yeah. some, let's Turn find some other things. Yeah, put right? that at the end. So, so again, it's not something that is, it's it's not like it's just LA Galaxy fans that are seeing this. The whole league is seeing this. Yeah. It it was refreshing to see that from a different executive because sometimes you do feel a little bit gaslit, like, you know, don't, don't, don't pee on my head and tell me that it's raining. Right. Like we're, we're experiencing this, right? We're all seeing the same thing that the club's been under the same tutelage, you know, for this past decade and, you know, things haven't gone swimmingly but i think this this survey is not incorrect because it's not the ownership group that's the problem because i think that's a little bit of a misconception as well i was on a podcast earlier this week shout out to i80 sports and they were saying well are, do you want the owners gone because you're not spending enough money it's like no no no. the ownership group is not the not the problem for those reasons listed they shell out the cash and they let people do it it's just they've hired the wrong people and that's kind of the funny thing with the klein movement uh, I, I, i'm not the, like the the cheating scandal aside, Klein, I think, and it's funny they talk about all the the sponsorships and all those things. I think he's been bad at his job, and that's enough reason to be fired. Like it shouldn't be a boycott, and it shouldn't be a movement. Movement. It should be, yeah, you didn't do a good, you didn't do a good job. Like it's time. This is a competitive market. Let's go and get someone who can do it better. Right. It's as simple as that. Boycott aside, cheating scandal aside, I think there's enough merit, you know, to go in that direction. So it's kind of refreshing to hear that take. We're not alone. You're you're not crazy. You're not being gaslit. And again, it's not not a reflection on the ownership group. You know, there are other issues you can have with the ownership group. Right. But them providing the money for players and, and making roster moves, and that's the other interesting thing. The Galaxy make plenty of roster moves. Right. They've just been the wrong ones. And so that that's a different argument, and that goes back to the, you know, whoever's bringing these players in as well. Bob uh, in the chat room says, Vanny is also in the Cosmo costume this season as well. So Ooh. there's a, what? What are you talking I about? Cosmo it. isn't real? I'm confused. You know, okay, funny story. I'm yes. going to tell a funny story, okay, and I don't ahead. even know if I'm allowed to share. Cosmo, I, I posted a picture of Cosmo today. Uh-huh. I tagged, tagged Cosmo. You right. know, the Galaxy was doing their their Rose graphic. Right. And, you know, I tagged Cosmo, and then Cosmo slid into the DMs, gave me a little shout-out. Hey, what's up, Hammer? And, you know, listen to COG, and I was like, I appreciate you, Cos. And I was like, don't say anything. Don't spoil the magic. I'm talking to Cosmo. <laughs> like, please don't say anything else. What do you mean? I, I don't <laughs> and understand. It, it ended there. So, yeah, me and Cosmo, just having a good time. Well, but I I've... was so afraid that I was like, Oh, no, no, no. Don't say anything else. Like, the, the, we're good. This is it. <laughs> Let's as, not have any further conversation. As a reporter, I am tasked with being neutral a lot. And sometimes I think that comes across, sometimes it doesn't. I'm not perfect at it. I am not neutral whenever it comes to the Cosmo. Uh, this is the second Cosmo that I am very aware of. Um, and I was not a big fan of them getting rid of the first Cosmo. I will say that the second Cosmo has won me over in all the right ways and does. It's a different. Um, it's a, it's different, a different flavor, but yeah. it's still good. Yeah. I don't know why, but I that alien comes up and gives me a hug, and I love that. I love Cosmo to death. So there is nothing partial, uh, uh, you know, yeah. impartial about me and Cosmo. There is a love affair there. I'm in love with Cosmo. <laughs> Um, my Likewise. son, my Appreciate son you, loves Cosmo. Cosmo. My son loves Co- like he sees he's, well, Cosmo, Cosmo. And so I was like, <laughs> I have to, I'm probably gonna have to take him to a game. So maybe a U.S. Open Cup game I don't cover. I'm going to take my son to a U.S. Open Cup game so he can go see Cosmo. Number one reason, go see Cosmo. Number two reason, perhaps watch soccer for 20 minutes before he gets bored and like makes me leave. Um, so anyway, so that was that. Okay, good. Glad we got had a Cosmo sidetrack <laughs> too. Um, which owner's group is the worst? The LA Galaxy? Not in there. All right, Stan Kroenke. Basically, they're saying how they can do that to the Colorado Rapids and then have SoFi Stadium out on the West Coast and not and like just completely ignore the Rapids and what they do. Um, I thought that was interesting. Uh, who's the most talented player in MLS? Ricky Pouge tied for third in this. Sebastian Joyusi from Austin FC. Um, you have Carlos Vela from LAFC. Not listed on this line, of course, is Chicharito or any other yeah. LA Galaxy player Which, outside of Ricky Pouge. But Ricky Pouge is probably the guy who has the highest upside. You know, it's we, we know that. Yeah. And that, that was one that I found interesting, but it's, 
it, again, it goes back to, do you, do you have eyes? Have you watched the games? Chicharito, while he's an excellent goal poacher, has never been the most talented player. You also see that, like, who's the best attacker? Chicharito can bang in a lot of goals. I don't know that I'd call him the best attacker. And so it seems like it's shade or like they're cutting Chicharito out. But I, I would argue that even Chicharito is well aware he's not taking guys 1v1 no. and you know creating space out, out on the wing to open up runs for other players. No, he's the one making the smart runs, finding himself in the right positions. And that's a skill in itself, but that's not going to get you most talented or best attacker. So I'm fine with him being off the list because that that's the player we've seen right. for you know, decades now. Well, I would like to, so the commercial underground says AEG was considered a good owner because they lack accountability and let people do what they want. It was. So if you go read the athletic and please do, I don't like stealing this stuff. I feel like there's a lot of stuff that I'm missing and that you're not getting. I'm not giving you all the really good quotes and everything that sort of comes with. You should go to the athletic and you should read this whole thing. There was this really interesting contrast between LAFC, which their owners are a little more involved and apply the correct pressure, and Miami, who they say their owners are too involved, right? And they get like in between things. That's the kicker. Yes. Right. And so with with the LA Galaxy, they're praised because Anschutz gives the people the ability to do what they want within the organization. Now that is always predicated on hiring the correct people and doing the correct job. There was criticism that there, that some people have been in this situation too long to have the results that they have and that they should be more forceful with like regime change whenever it comes. Right. Phil Anschutz. I don't know how much Phil Anschutz is involved with any of this anymore. Um, Phil's not a spring chicken. He might not be. Yeah. And he might not be. And so this could be AEG fully done. Now, AEG under Tim Laiwiki what is completely different animal than Tim than uh, AEG under Dan Beckerman, right? I mean, Tim Laiwiki's the ideas guy. That guy probably never sat at his desk the whole time he was at AEG mm-hmm. because he was always around moving, talking, making things happen, doing all these different things, right? And you can understand that from sort of those points that you're like, "Oh, okay. Um, you know, these things can all be different and and he can do a great job with the way he does. But now you have Dan Beckerman, who's much more of an executive, right? And he's going to sit there and he's protecting the AEG, uh, right. you know, business and he does all the things that he's supposed to do. But he's not the crazy idea guy that then goes off to Toronto and everybody's like, man, yeah. Toronto. everybody basically agrees, by the way, that Toronto is the best job to have, right? Greg Vanny came from yeah. Toronto and came to the LA Galaxy. Because it has all those things. It has the, the pockets to back you up and you know, the right, you know, autonomy of leadership to kind of let things go. Yeah. That, that they get a lot of love for that. Dude, the chat room, I could just spend all the chat room yeah. is the best. Yeah. Shout out to the chat. Uh, the best midfielder in major league soccer, Ricky Pooch tied at three dry uh, Carlos, Carlos Gill, um, Henny Mukhtar in there as well. So just sort of keep those in mind. Let's see what else do we have. Who's the best attacker in MLS? Nobody cares. Uh, will Miami sign Messi? I thought this, yes, <laughs> this season, nine votes. Yes. Not this season. Two votes. No, four votes. I'm not answering that five. Um, I just, I again, just interesting, interesting little things. Who is the best coach in Major League Soccer? Greg Vanny tied for fifth on this one with one vote. Do you think Greg? Shout out, and, shout out to Robin Frazier. Yeah, I was gonna say. Do you think Greg and Robin like <laughs> vote for each other? Is that how it works? I'm, I'm kidding. I don't know that to be true, but it still would be fun. Uh, Jim Curtin currently getting the best coach in Major League Soccer. Nine of those. Steve Toronto tied at second with three votes. Wilford Nancy, who was of course at Montreal and now is at Columbus. That I mean, that was sort of a surprise uh, with Montreal, and now he's now he's moved to Columbus, um, which should be really interesting to see. So. Um, that's that one. Greg Vanny, like I said, tied for fifth on that team getting mentioned. Uh, who is the most underrated coach in major league soccer? Greg Vanny tied for six in that. I don't know how he's underrated. I, they got this and yeah. underrated and voted for best coach. Right. I love that. I love that juxtaposition next to each other. Robin Frazier and Wilford Nancy, both, uh, with five votes on this one. And I would say Robin Frazier in my mind is one of the most underrated coaches in major league soccer. So I get that. Wilford Nancy, by the way, most people wouldn't even, if I told you Wilford Nancy and I said, what does he do? I doubt there were most people in major league soccer would know that he's the, uh, head coach of, of, uh, oh. Columbus crew. I thought he was on game of Thrones. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Uh, he does that in an off season. That's what I heard. Uh, who, doesn't that sound like a British actor who would be in Game of Thrones? Yeah, it does. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, who's the best sporting executive in major league soccer. I'm going to give you a hint. There's nobody on the LA galaxy on this. Correct. Um, who is the most underrated sporting executive in major league soccer? There is nobody on the LA galaxy on this. Uh, what do you think of the Apple TV deal? They sort of talked about that a little bit. Let me go to this one. Uh, do you think the galaxy Miami incidents have slowed or stopped cheating? Is there more big cheating going on? 
Only time will tell, one exec said. I hope so. Cheating comes in many different forms. The tampering at the academy and youth level right now is rampant. It's a real threat to the overall integrity. Some teams have no problem tampering with players at that level. 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 Others said they think punishments for Miami and LA slowed the cheating significantly. Some say they think it's just forcing teams to cover their tracks better or find different ways to get around the rules. Multiple GMs angrily said that some of the punishments weren't strong enough. Quote, the Klein... This is this is tough to read. I'm going to try it because yeah. I know what they were trying to say in this, but it's very much in if you heard somebody say it, it makes 100 percent sense. Yeah. Trying to <laughs> trying to read it is much harder. The, cl- <laughs> the Klein don't be the sporting director thing through the winter was a whole lot of horse doo doo, because what does that even effing mean? <laughs> you can still run the entire show, one GM said, uh, and then I, I think it will slow it down. But clubs are still cheating. One exec said, I won't say anything further. I'm I, w- I will not say anything yeah, further. true class, yeah. but but that. We've said that he he's at the stadium, you know, possibly on committees. Like the, him not being allowed to be the sporting director, it's kind of weird. It's a weird thing, and I don't know how true that really is. And I know that the what was sold to the supporter groups is that Klein is not involved in player decisions, but that feels like it's just you know uh, putting Vanny out on the chopping block if, if things go wrong because you know you have it goes hand in hand you don't you don't completely separate yourself you know that that's either a bold faced lie or it's something that you're you're giving as fan service and then you know is everyone cheating yeah probably yeah. you know I, I always joke around with my brother and I, I think with the NIL in college now you know it's kind of you know the I don't know what the legalities are of what you're allowed to talk about but he went to USC during the time when you know players were not allowed to get paid and you know shoes would show up and signed jerseys and things would happen like you know players are getting paid and so it's one of those things everyone kind of knows what happens and it's just it's just kind of how business is done and i would imagine with the amount of roster rules that mls has there's going to be some fudging of the numbers and some kind of working around and even if you are able to do that there are enough restrictions that kind of level the playing field because you have to try to at least cover your tracks enough to fit within that box so that's a skill in itself too so Again, another one of those. It is what it is. Uh, Herb gave us a six dollars and fifty four cent. <laughs> Do we need to add these up? There's going to be math. No, involved. it's like six five four, which means he's going to give us another one that's three three twenty one. That's what okay. I'm thinking. Because then six five four three two one, right? Ah, and then, and okay. then like everything it. blows up. I don't know what happens next. It's like on twenty four. <laughs> uh, Herb uh, says, "Did you guys see Ricky Pusha's jacket at the Laker game tonight?" I didn't, and I'm scared because. That type of fashion eludes me, Hammer. I am not cool. And like, so there'll be some crazy jacket. And everybody be like, oh, man, look at Ricky. That, that, here, let me tell you how not cool I am. I was going to say, oh, Ricky's so fly in that jacket. I'm sure that's what everybody that's, says. I, that's, that's, that's cap, fam. That's, I don't even. What is, <laughs> <laughs> Here's what I'll say, too. From what I've seen of Ricky, and again, I love Ricky. Right. It doesn't seem like he's like the most stylish guy on the planet. Like Chicharito takes some risks. Like he wears some stuff. I don't see Ricky, you know, wearing that that type of stuff. But again, I guess I'm gonna, you know, you can you could vamp while I go look for this jacket on Twitter right now. Okay, so people are saying the jacket is incredible. Hammer, can you go look up the jacket while while we do? I there's no way I'll be able to look it up and put it into the show. Right, that would be an impossible task. Right, we we would think that that would not be something that we could do somebody like get, send it to me on Twitter and I'm going to try to put it in the show. All right, let's, let's make this real. Let's do this the right way. Like we had a producer and everybody's like, you know, doing something. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man. I'm seeing, I'm seeing an, uh, a sweatshirt with an S there's gotta be more to it. There's gotta be something on the back. Yeah. I mean, you know, um, I'm trying to say, but please. sparkly, I mean, there's very glittery. It's got some nice Jordans on. It looks like Nikki's at so, the Nikki's at the at the Laker game. Let's see if we can. Ricky. Let's okay. let's let's hold on. We're gonna okay. get this. Nikki and Ricky. Yeah. So yeah. I like where you're going. Yeah. See, mm-hmm. Chicharito is more subdued here. They got some nice shoes, some good socks going. You know, I'm trying to paint a picture with my words here. But again, it looks like there's a lot of bedazzling going on with Ricky's uh, Ricky's sweatshirt here. I think that might be what the what the <laughs> what the comments are. A lot of yeah. flavor on this sweater. Yeah. Um, I am I am texting Nikki right now to asking if she oh, I'm has finding, seen... I'm looking at an old picture. You're That's looking at an old picture? picture? That's not the right one? No, I guess not. This is not good podcast. Oh, oh somebody <laughs> sent it to me. Oh, who sent it to me? Herb sent it to me. Of That's course. who sent it to me. Oh, my goodness. Okay, hold on. Everybody everybody freeze for a second. Everybody, this is this is how the show, this is how Breaking the co- <laughs> this is how the cookies get made here. All right. This is I am I am screen capping it right now. I am now saving it. Um I am saving it and let's see. Oh, that is a nice jacket. 
Let's see. Oh, also, let's see. Who else is... Oh, somebody else texted yeah. it to me. Dude, Galaxy this... World Order. Shout out to GWO for yeah. LA. Yeah, Just yeah, tag yeah. us. Yeah, we, we, are, we are on top of things. Hold on. I got this. I got this. I <laughs> have got this. Not a problem. I just have to grab it over here. I have to move it into here. All right. Wait, I just want you to know it? it's not properly sized. Okay. But nobody yell at me. Okay. Here it is. Hammer. Have you, what do you think? I mean, look. If you look at what I'm wearing on today's show, he, he like, you're, you're going to know what my opinion is. He basically yeah, shot up. you, skinned you, and wore you as a yeah. jacket. I, you know, no comment on <laughs> you know whether I let Ricky actually let let you know let that happen yeah, again. Right. Flustered again. Okay, you know, it's get, okay. Get Caceres and Brugman out of the room. <laughs> I was gonna and, uh, you know, we'll <laughs> we'll figure things out. Oh, and we'll man. let things fall where they may. It's going off the rails. Moving um, on. Yeah. Anyway, so there's there's Ricky's jacket. I by the way, if Nikki texts me back and says that she's going to call on the show, we'll just we'll just drop her right in because why not? <laughs> Fair. It's a it's a ready it's a ready for the sh- the season show. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is this well, is what in the, it is. in the third hour. We'll we'll hit it on the third hour when she calls in. Uh, <laughs> Molas. Uh, yeah. Our audio listeners are like uh, <laughs> the girls <laughs> on the ground is correct. So, so 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 it is. What what year is that? Is that a ninety? This is ninety six. Yeah. So it's 96. a ninety six jersey, but it's a ninety six sweatshirt, really, right? A and jacket. so yeah, or, or yeah, or jacket. Hold on, I'm gonna bring it back up. Let's see. It has the new logo on it, but it has the same sort of, I don't know, what do you call that? The shoulder like, design, yeah. Yeah, the shoulder, the, the blades. The, the piping, the, the blades. Yeah, yeah, blades is a good way to call it. Yeah, yeah so so it's on there. So it's, it's very nice. It's very nice. So indeed. Um, it's a windbreaker 96 home. Ooh, nice. It's almost so, it's like so a is, galaxy starter jacket. Yeah, it is starter jacket vibes there for sure. Is, is that going to be available or did Ricky have that specially made for him? Because I would like I would like one here on the show so that way I could hang it up in the back and show it to Hammer all the time. I was gonna say I'm definitely not getting sent that, but if I were to imagine 1996 where I'm wearing this, return to the Rose Bowl, it would be pretty sweet if the Galaxy wore those warm ups on the field, you know, to to kick off the game. That if if that's available, I think that'd be pretty a pretty nice homage. I'm kind of again the the El Tráfico kind of puts me in a different feeling. Like you you should realistic if you're the Galaxy and you're playing at the Rose Bowl and this is like a big thing, then you should wear like your green that is like had a history. At, but you know you're not going to. You're going to wear white it's, and they're going to wear black no. and it's white and black. And that's not right. If you're trying to do what you're trying to, it should be thrown back. This is a and, throwback, right? And added to that, if you look at the other clubs away jerseys, they're like booger green, like it's not colored, mucus colored. And so when you have the galaxies teal versus another green, that wouldn't work because the force they couldn't wear the teal and the black. There's not enough contrast there and then the other one's green then you have green on green you have a seattle portland situation and that's always a mess when they but play each other so the, again this wasn't thought out come on <laughs> the the one thing i will say is that i think that la lafc is a big enough rivalry that it should always be the team's home jerseys it should yeah. always be the white versus it's, black it doesn't matter where you play it what correct. happens you do not go into change you know no change kits for 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 that rivalry it is yeah like when liverpool plays um, I was going to say Manchester United, but then that would both be Reds if they were wearing their homes. That's a, that doesn't work. But there's like there's some games that are very Liverpool versus Chelsea, right? It's red versus blue, and you know it's yeah. red versus blue, and it's always red versus blue, right? This is something that driven me crazy about the Lakers the last few seasons. The NBA now has so many different jerseys for this team, but the Lakers are in purple and gold. So like when the Lakers are in you know white and fuchsia. And they're playing against, you know, the Warriors who are in black and, and gold. It's like, no, this this does not match. This is not who who I'm supposed to be watching. So uh, again, some some colors are meant to, you know, when teams have classic colors, they're meant to stay that way. Can, That's can my I, old man take for the can, day. Can I say that Eric and I are for sale tonight? If you would like to sidetrack us with any topic, we're pretty much game for it. I just I just would like to let you know. Uh, Major League Soccer announces the 2023 MLS Cup playoff format and schedule. We knew this was coming. <sighs> We knew it was um, coming, and we knew we weren't going to like it, no, no matter what it was, because the single em- elimination outside of home and away up until right. MLS Cup was – home and away for every round, to me, is, that's the perfect way to do it, except for MLS Cup. But single elimination, I didn't hate either, because you got to reward the higher seeds by get, having that home game. So I didn't hate that either. That was like the second most perfect. So this is not the third most perfect, what they gave us. By the way, Liverpool Everton would be a better example of that. Thank you, Alex. I appreciate appreciate you correcting my moronness. Um, one, <laughs> yeah, that's a word I made up. One through seven in each conference will automatically qualify to the round one best of three series. That's right. That's right. Round one will be best of three. Now, before round one happens, there's a play-in. So one through seven automatically go into, the, into that best of three. 
Okay. Eight and nine will play each other in a play in game, single elimination, higher seed hosts. Okay. Um, so you want to be in the top seven to avoid the eight, nine play in. That's not where you want to be. And then you'll play some dumb best of three game that will not matter because that get, third game sometimes will not matter. Sometimes it the, will, and it'll be exciting. That's the, that's the the most interesting thing to me because they wanted to increase the revenue share, the number of games that are going to be on TV. And they chose a format where you can end up with a, like a range anywhere. The league could end up with 16 games or they could end up with 24 games, but they'll probably land somewhere in between where you could have guaranteed the exact amount and know what you're doing. So it just seems kind of odd. The play in game, you almost feel like that was going to be inevitable because you know it's it works in baseball, it's working in basketball, and so they're just kind of following the trend on what's happening. So the playing game you maybe weren't going to avoid, but maybe seven versus eight, you give the first team the buy. But then I, I understand why they did this. It was about the money, and and then I I made the comment on Twitter. I would rather see if you're going to do a best of three, make the conference finals a best of three, because then you're getting the two best teams in each conference playing each other possibly three times. Those are going to be good games. Right. Having a number one play in eight, three times, you know, I, I don't think that's going to be the most exciting thing in the world. And so that that's, that that's where I have the issue with it. But if you're only doing the conference finals in three games, that's only two to three games as opposed to 16 to 24 games in that first round. So I get why they did it, but I'm, I'm not thrilled about it. They were trying to in- increase inventory, but I'm sort of like, just do home and home. If you're trying to envy, just it's make done. all of it. We know. Home yeah, and home. We, know we know what we like. And we like it. it <laughs> it's um, the way the rest of the world works. Like at Europa League, Champions League, it's home and away. Those those three games will be a home away home format. Match one higher seed hosts, match two lower seed hosts, match three higher seed hosts. Uh, if a match is tied at the end of regulation, no extra time, straight to penalty kicks. Um, the first team to win two matches will advance. So you don't even guarantee to play three matches, by the way. So the so yeah. as as Eric rightfully points out, your inventory of games that you're trying to increase may not increase at all if all the if the home teams by in that one first one game maybe yeah yeah maybe a couple games here or there maybe all of them go to three games. They're like, see, we told you. I also um, don't like straight to penalties. There's there's the the magic of extra time. There is something about extra time. I agree. Yeah. So anyway, it's stupid. I don't like it. And I'm sure we will complain about it for the rest of the year. And by the way, they waited until three days before the season started to announce it. <laughs> the, they're Make, like, yeah, we need something. You know. Dude, oh, I forgot. There was one quote and it was talking about Apple TV or something like that. Is it this one? Uh, is it do you like the apple tv deal did we skim over that i feel like we talked about yeah we didn't talk about it i think it's really cool we don't know um so there's there's some we didn't talk about it but there was one well oh the the interleague transfers maybe where somebody said i I, leave it to mls they're going to screw this up like there was there was an executive (laughs) within it was like leave it leave it to mls and and they're gonna they're gonna screw this up no problems i forget what it was um Let's see. Did, uh, limited tickets remain for the LA Galaxy's 2023 MLS regular season opener at Rose Bowl, according to the LA Galaxy. Um, basically, 90% sold out um, is what they were saying. Uh, and in the LA Galaxy sections, I should point out, 90% mm-hmm. sold out in the LA Galaxy sections. Remember, if you're in the LA Galaxy section, you can't wear LAFC gear. I'm sure that's a lot of you were really disappointed in that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then if you're, in the, if you're in the LAFC sections, you can't wear LA Galaxy gear. There are certain sections where you're, if you have that gear, you will not be allowed to walk in or behind those sections at all. So. Yeah, and it was, it was funny, and shout out to Andrew Alessana posted out on Twitter as well. So people were saying, man, this is crazy. There are sections where you can't wear the other team's gear. It's like, yeah, that's how it is in most places around the world. These people are separated by literal cages and waves of security and police. Like, this is how it works in a lot of places. And it's been the way uh, El Traficos have been going recently as well. You know, there are lanes that have been... You know, if you go to a regular LA Galaxy game, you're ex- used to exiting one way. During an El Trafico, you can't exit that way because you're literally not allowed to walk in that section if you're wearing a specific jersey. So it's one of those things that is what it is. In terms of the attendance record, the previous record was 73,019 uh, for the Charlotte FC match, which the Galaxy played in. And I think they're gunning for that. They mentioned that they had 70,000 sold. We've seen that they're giving, you know, scratch offs and QR codes for free tickets. So I think that you're definitely going to see over 73,000 tickets distributed so the the purpose of this game not to say that yeah i I don't know what type of special i guess you just get your name in the record book record books but it was to break the attendance record that's why they wanted to do this and they're going to make sure that they achieve that goal boycott be damned they're going to make sure that they they pass that that seventy three thousand number uh commercial underground says do signs need to be approved by fan engagement team i have seen that rumor out there i can't confirm that's what i've seen yeah i can't confirm but i've seen that as well um last thing and then we'll do the preview um because it's time 
Uh, coming in March 2023, Dignity Health Sports Park in LA Galaxy will be launching Galaxy Park, a newly imagined complex on the campus of Dignity Health Sports Park, featuring 5v5 soccer fields, futsal courts, uh, pickleball courts, and paddle courts. Now, uh, these are where the tennis courts are right now. Uh, basically, there's always been tennis courts there, and so they are changing those tennis courts into these things. They're 5v5, and it looks like there's five turf fields um, that are going to be 5v5, and 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 in that, it looks like there's three futsal courts that are sort of set up in that way. Um, there's the ability to change some of those into pickleball courts or into paddle courts. Okay, so that, that was my question. Yeah. I don't see the pickleball courts, but I would imagine, yeah, it's put on it the, on futsal, the futsal courts. Yeah, put yeah. it on the futsal courts, and, and you have them. This is around that training center. There's like a whole workout area. A lot of times uh, in preseason, you'll see like galaxy go to the tents that are down there and you can work out outside but you're under tents it's kind of a different place to you know get your workout in and do some stuff i've been would out you, there to see that stuff would you say that the workouts are in tents in t- <laughs> there it is okay top left corner on that, that one. no it was middle middle okay. middle right middle Listen, right i don't i don't push the buttons what yeah i know i just i just i just remembered um i think i think that's it are you ready well, well, let's yes. talk about, sorry, I know, Galaxy Park. I, I love this idea, and I know there are people who are kind of, you know, bashing it and not crazy about it, but this is, and I'm only thinking, like, from a game day experience, you want pickup fields, you want this atmosphere, like, you're going to watch a soccer game that you should be surrounded by soccer. There's that element, and then as someone who just loved, wants to see the game grow in this country, this is how you do it. It's, you know, you have opportunities for people to play, you know, week in, week out during the week where you can rent facilities, you can go play pickup ball. Like this is how it works. This is how you grow the game and build a soccer culture. So kudos to the galaxy for having that on their site. So people can go there and play right next to the galaxy stadium. Hey, let's go check out a game. Let's go play where, you know, where the big club plays. I, I, I really like this idea uh, to me. If you're, if it was my decision, if I were, you know, president of this country, I'd put, you know, five B five fields everywhere on every park in every city. And that's my promise to you as, as councilman <laughs> in your district, I promise more futsal courts. Um, all right. No, I, I think it's gonna be, I, again, the thing is it's gonna be done very quickly, March, 2023, which means that basically you're just able to go over the places that you're there. I mean, it's not a huge renovation project. I would, you know, guess dollar wise, there's some, there's some significant investment in it, but like, you know, are you talking millions and millions of dollars? Probably not. Um, you know, could it be, you know, 300, $500,000? Probably very well could be just because of the materials that you need and how you put those together. So really cool. I'm fun. I, I hope that's where we're playing. I've been told there will be a media game this year. Uh, mostly because some of the some of the media members are like, let's play a media game, and I'm like, don't do it, don't, don't do it. You just you 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 look like. It. Hopefully, the players come out to watch. I think that should be fair. Is that if we get to criticize the players, that they should get to come out and <laughs> yell at us while we are while we're playing and trying to do things. Um, I was that, like, if if you don't send me the jersey, I uh, I will fly out for the the media game. Oh, okay. Um, I would like to go studs up on you, uh, on on, on, on you Panda? preferably. No, yeah. not me on Panda. <laughs> Uh, her, by the way, $9 and 87 cent super chat says, he, yeah, yeah he wouldn't let me do three, two, one. one. Yeah. Uh, come on viewers, listeners hit that like button over a hundred live viewers and only 20 likes. Thank you Herb, for doing the job. That I'm that, supposed Herb. to be doing that. And <laughs> the whole deal. man of mystery. You LA love. Galaxy playing LAFC El Trafico coming up on Saturday, February 25th. That is a 6.30 p.m. local time kickoff. I always give you local time. I'm never going to give you like Eastern time. That It doesn't matter. where, Whatever time the game is on here, that is what I give you. Okay? So you don't have to be like, what well, is that East Coast time? No, I would never do that. We don't live in the East Coast. We live on the West Coast. I am I'm very uh, cognizant of that. Uh, yeah. Rose Bowl, Pasadena, weather is sketch. Um, so be careful while you're headed out there. Be careful these next couple days, um, because I'm sure it's going to be, there's hail and lightning and other things that, you know, could possibly come around and do all those things. So 6 30 PM is that available on Apple TV, MLS season pass, just like every other one. So in order to get us ready for that, in order to do that, we are thrilled to have back for the very first time in 2023 and to kick off season number 15 for Corner of the Galaxy here, Eric the Portuguese Hammer and his dramatic game preview. LA Galaxy fans, do you know where you are? You're in the jungle, baby, and you're going to play your 2023 season opener at the historic Rose Bowl. 
Welcome to the jungle. We've got fun and games. We've got everything you want. Honey, we know the names like Ricky Pooj. He's got a smile and it seems to me it reminds me of childhood memories. Now and then when I see his face, it takes me away to that special place. And if I think too long about an MVP caliber, caliber season, I'll probably break down and cry. Whoa, whoa, that sweet child of mine. And while the galaxy will be heading into this edition of El Trafico with an appetite for destruction, we'll be hoping that this, yes, this is the season where Efren Alvarez takes us down to the paradise city where the grass is green and the girls are pretty. Please, Efra, please take us home and let's raise that transfer fee. And if you happen to be heading out to the game, there might not be any November rain, but the weather will definitely be a factor. So whether you're going to use your illusion and watch this game on a viewing party or on Apple TV, or you're braving the elements to live and let die in person, just know that we are all behind you and we will be knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door, hoping to kick off the new season with three precious points. There he is. He's back. He's clearly already. You, you're clearly ready for the game. I, I, I'm ready. I I'm called hyped. you preseason ready before, and I apologize for that. You were just getting warmed up, and I, I, I jumped the gun on that. Um, LA the, Galaxy the versus guns and the roses on that one. The, the jumped the guns and the roses, correct? Oh, guns and roses. Thank you. You get it now. He got it. He did it. We did it, Joe. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> How often do you send me that gift? I love it. I, that's my favorite one. We did it, Joe. <laughs> we did it, Joe. Uh, all right. Um, LA Galaxy, LAFC, uh, Rose Bowl. Listen. You know, normally we can sit here and we'll talk about all the tactics that are involved here. The bottom line is the LA Galaxy are not a complete team. Trying to figure out who they're even going to start in this particular case. I think you're going to see Dayon Jovalich up top. With Chicharito out, Dayon yeah. Jovalich gets start. Now, no break. now, I think there are people who are super hyped about that. Number one is, and I think you have a reason to be somewhat optimistic about it, is Dayon Jovalich shows up for these games. Always does. Always scores bangers. Usually is hyped for El Trafico. I would warn you, he does not play great. 90 minute soccer and we have not seen that him in preseason has been MIA. All right. So preseason is preseason. See the, the season is something else. If you're looking for a, a, a problem, the LA galaxy could face coming up. Uh, you very well could see that day on Jovalich is not the 90 minute player you expect him to be. Other people asking, they said, well, what happens whenever Jovalich goes for 60 minutes, who comes in after him? So Preston Judd is the backup. In that particular case, Judd has looked okay in the preseason, not a horrible thing, but you're asking him really to make this debut in the biggest game to, to really try to force things out there on the field in the biggest of atmospheres. That's why I don't think you're going to see guys like Jalen Neal out there to start. It's a really big game. I could see him starting too, but I don't know that they will. And Vanny has rotated that back line so much. I'm not sure. I think Edwards is for sure the left back starter. I think Kelvin Leardam is for sure the right back starter. What he does in the middle, whether that is Martin, I think Martin has to start this game. So you're going to see right. Martin in there. Who is that other person? Is it Mavinga or is it Neil? And I think it's a coin flip right now. I expect that it's going to be Mavinga. But don't be yeah. surprised if Neil starts this game as well. Um, looking in the midfield, I think that's set. Right. I mean, I, nobody's going to argue. I don't think Tyler Boyd is starting. Um, See, I, I could. It, it all depends on on how you feel about about Costa. If you feel like he's going to be there or if you feel like Efrain is going to take that spot. Efrain might might be the one that fills in that role. Obviously, you see Dayon there and shout out to you for always being the one who's pumping the brakes and saying, hey, when Dayon starts, it's not always firing. And we've kind of seen that in the preseason. But we've also seen Dayon have success in putting balls in the back of the net. So I have no doubt that he can take this opportunity and, and run with it. I, I would like to see Boyd for Costa on the wing to start and then maybe Efrain Alvarez uh, on the other wing. And I, I think that can work. Uh, you don't think Sega can get the start? I think you definitely see Caceres. But I, I feel like you can see Caceres and, you and could, Sega. Caceres, Mavinga, Neil, I think they're kind of toss up at the point. I don't think Sega okay. has had a great start to the to the seat to the preseason but he's but been around i he feel has. like him and caceres know each other and you you want to go right. with female familiarity so i feel like that can be there so it should be interesting uh scott gave us a 20 dollars super chat says have a great weekend everyone be safe and enjoy the game darren Appreciate you, scott stay darren, well yeah darren with a 10 dollars super chat and he did a better job than you in one That's sentence I, uh, I let him know on on the track he said uh, the, the grass is green and the goals are pretty I should be paying you, Darren, for that one. That thank, should I should you, be Darren. giving you the super chat. That you're writing my material for me. Things that will be at the Rose Bowl, things that will not be at the Rose Bowl. Things that will be at the Rose Bowl, Twizzle. Things that will not be at the Rose Bowl, Josh. 
Things that will be at the Rose Bowl. <laughs> Robbie Keane. Things that not will be that will not be at the Rose Bowl. Supporters groups. Okay, I'm trying to think. Can you come up with another one while uh, we're going? No, no, but that's okay. I just neither of those things are good. Well, except for Twizzle, I like Twizzle. Well, that's Robbie, 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 Robbie Keane being Robbie there Keen, is, is cool. Yeah, but but it's a bummer about the they about bring the $2, Robbie Keane when, when the supporters groups are oh, not there. Right. Like it's come on, Robbie, or not not. It's it's just unfortunate. You know, you want you want Robbie is such a legend for the club. You want him to have the love and adoration that he deserves to have with the you know fans at full voice. Yeah, I I, I agree with that. Um. I will say that uh, that if you're looking at the midfield and, and one name I think we missed so far, Memo Rodriguez. I think Memo starts yeah. this game. So That's I, fair. I think it could be... I don't think it's Costa. I just... Again, talk to me after tomorrow is over and Costa's still on this team. Okay? Then I will be more about oh. talking about Douglas Costa where he goes, but I haven't seen him. I don't know about him, his calf. I don't... He, well, it's it's funny that, that I have my over under game. Do you want to do rapid fire with that? We're already over. Oh yeah, yeah. We let's go. Let's go rapid All fire. Right. I, yeah. I have a, a little over under game instead of doing like pr- do your predictions for the season. My over under. So here here over under games played for Douglas Costa this season zero point five. <laughs> over under games played. He's gonna play half a game. Well, he's either gonna play. He's, you're saying he's gonna be bought out, or you think, or do you think he plays this season? I'm going to say he gets bought out. I think I'm going to go okay. under. So zero. Uh, yeah, under. I mean, I, I, I'm going to live in that fantasy, like, so, like you know, conspiracy theory land until tomorrow is over. That's that's what's going to happen. And then Fair I will enough. adjust to reality. It's fine. That's that's the beauty of the show. When you listen on, on Sunday after the game has been played, it's going to be a lot of fun right. to hear Josh be wrong. All right. Goal scored over under Javier Chicharito Hernandez, 12. Under. Dejan Jovalich, 10. I'm not as high. I don't know where if he has to start, he's not scoring goals so under. Wow. Okay. I've just wow. I've just wow. I've just bombed just the LA Galaxy. They, under, they, under they, don't the they don't even All make the playoffs now. They don't even make the playoffs now. Yes. Any other player of more than six or over under is set at six. Over. Okay. Okay. I think uh, I think somebody's gonna be sneaky goal scoring person. I think Tyler Boyd could definitely okay. be that player. Memo last Rodriguez season. might be that guy too. Okay. Last season that we had with two ten plus goal scorers was twenty eighteen. Zlatan, 22, Ola Kamara, 14, Drini with 11. So it's been a little while since right. we've had multiple goal score, 10 plus goal scores. Assists, over under for Puj, 10. Over. Okay. Efrain, eight assists, over or under? Under. Edwards, over or under, six. Over. He's going to be, he's going to be, eight. I'm not, I'm more worried about his defense this year. I think his offense will be fine. Okay. And then does anyone else, Crack the top three in assists besides Puj, Efrain, and Edwards. I think uh, I think Caligari. I let's watch him okay. and see it because yeah, yeah. I don't know yet, but yeah. I mean, I think you could be yes. in there. I think Mark Delgado could rack up some assists, although he usually gets the second assist. But that's still an assist in Major League Soccer, so it, you know it counts. Um, yeah, it's super interesting. Okay, are we are we good? What else? There's what one else more. Got? Okay, over under clean sheets. Jonathan Bond. What's your number? Seven. Sorry. Yeah, I was. I was <laughs> Forgot to say. give a number. How does this game play? Again, we're trying a new bit here. Mm. Seven was his number from last season. Mm. Better or worse? Mm. That it depends on the Galaxy defense. The what defense. I think is yeah. Galaxy defense. That's why it's not a Klingsman. Or right. sorry, not a a, a Bond stat. Joke here. Yeah, I yeah. and I don't know yet if the Galaxy defense is better or worse. I think they might be better. I'll say. Like I'll say. Be. I'll say over. I'll say. I'd over. say over as well. Okay. All right. That was, okay. This was fun. Okay. Did it work? Raheem, five red cards over or under. <laughs> I had yellow cards. Uh, do we want to talk about, you know? No. Where do we think? Uh, yeah, we're good. Caceres, no. I think, is going to lead. The Douglas team. Costa, red cards to go on vacation. <laughs> 1.5. Oh, yeah. Over. Better yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to play zero games to get more than one red card. <laughs> Uh, uh I, so, so I actually think, and this is why I think the defense could be better this year. I think that the midfield is, is going to be a little more experienced as well. And with the midfield and the defense, I think cause Caceres can play. I think they're going to find somebody between Mavinga, Neil and Sega who can play that center back role. I think that Caligari could be really good as a right back on defense. Left back is a concern for me, but they have two players there. And I think maybe platooning that will be okay. Um, and then there's still the young DP. There's still a DP spot open somewhere. Their galaxy yeah. are going to sign somebody. And I don't know who that is. And it makes, and there's not even any rumors. So it feels like they haven't even tried. Go try. That's the frustrating thing. The galaxy, we knew players were going to come in and it feels like they, they still haven't come in. So it does make me nervous. Okay, good. I'm, I'm glad you're nervous. Uh, let's get to 538. <laughs> 
Uh, we'll do a little bit of big stuff on 538 first. Uh, in order of terms of winning the Supporter Shield, LAFC is favored with 20%. Uh, win MLS Cup at 16%, which is also a lead for LAFC. So 538 says that LAFC will repeat. Repeating so hard. People have no idea how hard it's it is. It's really hard. Um, if you were around the LA Galaxy between 11, 12, 13, and 14, you will know how hard it is to do. Or if you, if you saw what Se- the Seattle did last season, where a lot of their effort was spent uh, in that CONCACAF Champions League, and so everything else kind of suffered from it. You know, So you, you see it with even with not repeating with MLS Cup, just putting your dedication you know, all in in one avenue, you know, that, zaps, that zaps you quite a bit. Very, uh, it, it, it could. Uh, Philadelphia, 15% Supporter Shield, 13% MLS Cup. You have the LA Galaxy down there. And what is that, sixth? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, sixth. Sure. Uh, 5% chance of the Supporter Shield, 5% chance at winning MLS Cup. The, I have the LA Galaxy as the third best Western Conference team. Uh, even though their offense and defensive team rating is slightly better than Austin, who has a 46.1 SPI, which is their index to sort of say how good a team is with the LA Galaxy at 45.6. I would not be surprised if the LA Galaxy are a top four team in the Western Conference again. I would say that um, depending on who else comes in, you might be higher than that. I think five and up, fifth and up is is the absolute floor for the LA Galaxy at five. Um, just because they have too many returning players and they played yeah. too well at sometimes last year. Now, and I think we yeah, talked about it last season with Nashville joining the Western conference, how it was that the, the playoff point number was going to be lower because they were going to cancel each other out. Now, Nashville going to the East St. Louis coming in. I think that bumps the galaxy up. So if you thought, you know, if you think they're five, I feel like they could be four. I, I always said the home playoff game should be the goal. So I think fourth, four, fourth seed feel feels about right for this galaxy team again. Okay. Now, for this game, uh, LAFC a little more of an unknown. They've actually turned over a whole bunch of minutes. The Galaxy probably in about the same amount of turnover with minutes. The charts we saw at the beginning of the season, or the beginning of the offseason, or or the beginning of the preseason, they said that basically LAFC had turned over a lot of minutes and the Galaxy hadn't, but then Grant's here went away and Araujo went away. Those were a lot of starting minutes in there, so I would imagine that they probably turned over roughly about the same amount. Um, But with no Chicho... Uh, with no Arango in there, that's a that's a that's a big piece that they're trying to replace. Yeah. Not saying it's going to kill them, and I'm not saying that they're not. Uh, in my mind, I would think favored in this game. Quite honestly, you're having MLS defending cup or MLS cup uh, defending champions. Uh, they're coming into a game against their rival, who they last beat in the playoffs. And remember, Raheem Edwards talked about it today. He said, "We know that they beat us in the playoffs. We know it's a rivalry game. We know we're not the team that we're going to be in the future, but." You know, we still we are excited and pumped up for this game. So yeah. so there's there's a revenge aspect of this game for the LA Galaxy, but I think LAFC also understand that as well. Um yeah. we'll see how the the stadium treats everybody um in there. What what would you say on on this particular uh topic? You feel like LAFC is coming in with a in an advantage? Yeah, I no, I feel like they're coming in with a little bit of a hangover, feeling good about themselves, you know lost some some of those players you know you think about who saved them in the very end gareth bale retired uh you know chicho who had such a good season for them really looked was probably their most dangerous player from my eye test whenever i watched them play i hated to see him on the field whenever the galaxy were lined up against them so i do feel like they're beatable (laughs) and we were kind of talking about it as down as people are on the galaxy because of the organizational issues the team on the field isn't awful and they always get up for the games you know, Raheem Edwards knows what it means. Ricky Pouge got a taste of it, and he's going to be up for it. Brugman's going to be up for it. So Dayon, you know, he's going to be ready to go. He's going to be fired up. So I think the Galaxy, you know, have a chance in this game. And according to 538, they actually have the Galaxy as slight favorites, which is kind of crazy. But I, I kind of see where they're coming from as well. Uh, should we get to 538 then? Yeah, it's there. Pop it up. Okay, here we go. Uh, <laughs> 538 has the LA Galaxy as slight favorites, 39%. Uh, LAFC at 37% to win the game. So Galaxy 39% to win the game. LAFC at 37%. That's that home field advantage bump yep. that they're sort of getting there. So very much a, a pick me uh, game in this particular yep. case. Uh, and a 25% chance of a draw. Yeah, it's it's really tight. And I, I always like to look at the whole state, the whole slate. And this is the closest margin out of all the games that on this opening weekend. So just something, it does feel like, you know, go ahead and pick them. We'll, we'll see where it goes. Interesting thing with the betting odds. If you go to Bovada, you can get the Galaxy at plus 180 and LAFC at plus 135. So I feel like even the Vegas odds don't know where to go. You could, you know, good, good luck to either side. It almost seems like maybe you just bet the draw and hope for the worst. 
we will uh, we will see how all that plays out. So now, Eric, is our favorite time, um, something we haven't done in quite a long time since the, the end of the playoffs and everything else that's in between. Uh, we get to pick our, 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 our score line for this particular game and uh, wrap up the show. So where do you have it? Well, guaranteed to be wrong. Yes. I think rainy conditions, sloppy game, first game jitters. I think we see an ugly game and, and people walk away disappointed with a 1-1 draw. I think that's where we land. Okay, 1-1. It, it is going to be preseason-ish with a yeah. overly physical flair. I would yeah. say that. It's not, um, they might not be sharp in front of goal. So so you're saying 1-1 draw. Okay. Uh, I am going to say 3-1 victory. Wow. For LAFC. Wow. It's, it's interesting because we usually vibe on the same way. No, so um, like if, if you went first and picked a 1-1 draw, I would have gone Galaxy win 2-1. Right. Late winner. Right. Yeah, but no, I, I think I, a 1 1 draw is possible. I do not think that the LA Galaxy have the horses to play in this game right now. I don't. I don't. So I think a 3 1 loss to me sounds. And it's going to be sloppy. I'm not going to say that they're going to be perfect or they're going to be anything else. Um, I don't have the confidence in this team. I like a lot about this team and how it's set up. And if you look at the executives around who are paying attention in the league and whose job it is to sort of ascertain talent and figure out where it is, they say the LA Galaxy are a good team in the Western Conference. I think they're going to be. I just don't think they're 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 that team on Saturday. Um, you know, ho- yeah. Sh- shout out to Tom Bogert. You know, Tommy Scoops. He has the LA, the LA Galaxy is the number one seed. So you know, I'm gonna follow follow Tom Bo- Bogert. You know, right. to battle. He's 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 my champion. It, it's the I'm mustache. It's that yeah. mustache. It's it, yeah. it it it's it's good looking on him and it's knowledgeable. The mustache knows. <laughs> um, adds, yeah. I would like to point out. I would like to point out very clearly because it feels like people haven't paid attention to the show in a very long time. I don't believe I've ever picked the LA Galaxy to win in an El Trafico game. I don't think it's happened. I, I, no, I think we did. I think we did in the playoff. When was, last it, was the play? It was because we were, we were like we were riding yeah, high. We were we, riding we were, really high. And and yeah. I and and clearly saw what happened there. But I I have consistently looked at these teams and looked at their matchups and said I don't think there's that. And I've been wrong. I mean, here's the well, other part. And that's the beauty of the rivalry game. It, it, it never goes how you expect it to go. Right. Um, I, I really do. Here's the thing. And, and Greg Vanny mentioned this. And I think this is the cool part about this game. It is a difference of styles. What is the Galaxy style? They like to hold the ball. They like to control the ball. They like to work it. They like to do it. LAFC likes to get the ball. They like to turn you over. They like to force and press in the, into those offsides, right? So that way the backside gets the press on. Um, there's there's a lot of movement and shift, but it happens quickly, right? So whose style fits a wet, cold yeah. game? I don't it, think the Galaxy style fits that. Oh, yeah, I don't think you're. See, I feel like it does. Really? I feel like you, no. Yeah, you're, you're, on you're a gonna wet field, away, you're gonna you're gonna try to hold the ball for eighty but, minutes. But you're gonna they're not gonna be able to counter as quickly and to be as smooth on the ball. I don't know. I disagree. I feel like the, this could be the, in the galaxy. They're, they're looking for the clashes. They're <laughs> looking for the quick turnovers, which are going to happen more often on a sloppy field. And because of that, they're able to counter more quickly. Look at the LA Galaxy's back line. The fastest person on is Raheem Edwards. Everybody else is not very quick, right? And so you're looking at speed. You're looking at things. Now, maybe that maybe the field is bad enough that the speed slows down, right? But I'm expecting it to be squirrely out there. So that's why I say it. All Fair right. enough. There squirrely. Yeah, squirrely is probably the right word. It's going to no. see. Interesting, very interesting. Again, that game coming up, 6.30 p.m. on Saturday. Uh, predictions guaranteed to be wrong. And, and that's the other part of this. Yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah, uh, I think we we had a streak where we did two in a row, mm-hmm. and then, but that was it. Two out of 34 games. Yeah. yeah don't, was, don't take that to the bank. I picked a score correctly twice, I think, the entire season. Just just let everybody know. Uh, Rose Bowl, Pasadena, game at 6.30 p.m. February 25th. That's on Saturday again. Uh, dress warm. Dress for wet conditions as you can. Um, get out there if you're going to the game. If not, going to the watch parties. Enjoy yourself. Be safe. Season pass on MLS and Apple TV. That is it, Mr. Hammer. We went for what? What, almost two hours. Almost what do you, what two do you hours. expect? Yeah, again, the people are asking for COG after dark, so maybe we'll go a third hour. It's, yeah. almost, it's almost it's almost tomorrow. We'll here. just we'll just go again. Just keep going. Yeah, just do it again. We'll just run it back. Right, we'll talk I, about the jacket some more. Okay, good. I'm glad. Jacket. Uh, tell people where they can find you because we are absolutely. I still have to pack, <laughs> and I got like clean clothes, and I got a lot of stuff to do, man. So you tell people where they can find you. Let's go. All right, uh, for finder, you can find me at Hammer EV9 on everything. That's Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. So keep your eyes peeled. Might be a video coming this weekend. So that's Hammer EV and the number nine. 
All right, if you're looking for me on Twitter, it's at Jay Gessman, J-G-U-E-S-M-A-N, and of course, at Galaxy Podcast. Head on over to cornerofthegalaxy.com. That's where you can find all of our shows, all of our content. Corner of the Galaxy, just search it, YouTube, anywhere else. Podcast, subscribe, like, all that fun stuff. Smash that like button. Why not? Let's just go complete YouTube like live streamer on this one. Uh, shout out to Architect of Varbell, $5 super chat. If they beat us at the Rose Bowl, does this count as the first official time they beat us at home, or does it only count at the digs? A question that will remain until next time. All right, for Eric, the Portuguese hammer, Vieira, and I, Josh, Pato, Guessman, you've been listening. You've been watching to our little Corner of the Galaxy. Have a great one, everybody. You've been listening to the Corner of the Galaxy podcast on cornerofthegalaxy.com. You can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Galaxy Podcast. And be sure to check out and subscribe to iTunes, Stitcher, and Facebook by searching for Corner of the Galaxy. Fans, we thank you for listening, and we ask that you be kind and courteous to your neighbors as you leave the podcast. We thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you again. Until then, I'm Michael Arajo, and on behalf of the entire Corner of the Galaxy crew, goodbye, everybody.